Hi, this is Fletcher Wheaton from Real Estate Without Borders. You're tuned in to Dream Chasers, interviews with the future. Being radically transparent, you're just radically honest. Instead of trying to fit like a card so you could be agreeable with people. Because being agreeable, most of the times, doesn't really lead to honesty. And now, a word from our sponsor, High Rise Capital. High Rise Capital is a boutique commercial real estate investment firm that helps high income professionals, high net worth individuals, and family offices obtain above average returns with reduced volatility and tax efficiency from high quality commercial real estate investments. High Rise Capital helps clients achieve meaningful investment returns, generate multiple streams of income, and participate in investments that enhance lives and provide a tangible societal benefit. To learn more about High Rise Capital, please visit their website and download their free ebook. More doors, more profits, both of which you can find in the show notes. Thank you. This is Dream Chasers, episode 157 with Nadia Price. Hello and welcome to episode 157 of Dream Chasers. I'm your host, Adam Carswell. Hi, Grandma. And we are joined today, right now, by one of hands down my best friends of all time uh, someone that i throughout the years have just always been able to go to for guidance help advice just to have a good time nadir price and we will be joined later on during this interview by our other friend of similar stature in nature his name is johnny caldwell aka poppy seed uh, Poppy will be joining us later. At least that's the plan. Poppy, we hope we hope you're all right and you're going to be able to get out of here because um, anyways, yeah, we, we hope to hear from him. So anyways, before we start diving in, Nadir, how are you doing today? And uh, why don't you, maybe we'll do this because I don't know if we've ever actually shared this. We've had, we've had Nadir on like multiple Dream Chasers episodes, actually, if you go back to like way back, like episode like 47 and 59 or something like that, which by the way, are hard episodes to find something happened in our archiving process that that made that happen so if you want to listen to the old ones we're going to make sure we get those in the show notes but if also you can just shoot me a dm anyways nadir tell us a little bit about who you are um where you're coming in from here today and then also how you and i got to know each other okay. adam thanks for having me it's interesting because a lot of times when you, when you say like i'm one of your best friends like to me of course you're one of my best friends but to me you're more like family you know ever since like we we met like yo like no like i was kind of like had that i don't know it's just that connection to you you know and your family and getting to know your family your mom your dad and you know your friends and it's just it's just been dope like that's pretty cool mm -hmm. but yeah i'm not there for for some of the new people um, I'm from Belize. I'm coming in from Belize right now, from the capital of Belize, which is Balmapan. And I'm a photographer. That's pretty much what I've been doing for a few years now. Mostly I focus on adventure photographer. But I know things are a little bit, you know, a little bit down with the current situation that the world is experiencing. But still, you know, we keep it going. <laughs> But yeah, man, always it's it's always it's always a fun time whenever I get to speak to you, Adam, or whenever you know I get to call you, or you know, that's that's pretty dope. So um, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess tell us um, you just walk us through the story. I, I know I've got my my interpretation of it as well too. But how did we first meet each other? <laughs> I remember well. It was I think it was the year twenty thirteen. I was attending. Yeah, twenty thirteen. Yep. I was I was at Keeling University doing my undergrad in computer science, and that year the university was was they were gathering a talent of basketball players, like some of the best players in the entire country, right? And I I, I went to the school as the as a photographer and videographer for the basketball team primarily, and I remember. That summer, you came down to assist in coaching. I remember I just barely missed the trip to, uh, you guys went to see Adad Del Carmen for a tournament, and I missed it by like a week. <laughs> that was insane. We were, we were in Ciudad. But I remember when you came down, and you came down as a, 
I was an assistant coach. You came did, down to do right. it. And everything kind of, it, it was, it was, it was, it was so interesting because you didn't really become an assistant coach. Like you became a player because you could hoop. I'm pretty sure you could still hoop. And right. somebody who were with, with your experience in Belize, especially, I remember your footwork. So like you were unstoppable. <laughs> and that, that, was, that was like a big plus in Belize. And that was a big plus having you in the team. Uh, you played this. You, you were you were the five, right? Center. You played the five, yeah. Which um, being six six foot five was always um, a little odd because normally anyone who's playing a five or a center is going to be at least six six, if not taller, pretty much across the board. But I do have a six foot eight wingspan, and in Belize, um, thankfully, it, it worked out for me just like it did in the U.S. <laughs> that, that was the, the, I remember you came in. So I remember you, I, I was actually, I was helping out with the, at the marketing department and I saw you a couple of times. I, I, I think I, I spoke to you a couple of times and then I saw a video you shared. I think you were, you were uploading a video or something, but I saw a video of you in a roller coaster with your friends and <laughs> what, what's the name of the park? I know, I know exactly which one you're talking about. And so I'm going to drop that here in the comments on Facebook. I'm thinking for the sake of uh, Courtney and everyone on our team, Rena as well, Jeremy. Um, by the way, that's the team behind Dream Chaser. I mean, it just continues to grow. We're having such a good time over here. Um, I'm going to put the link to that video here in the, in the comments on Facebook. Courtney and Jeremy and Rena. if you think there's a way we can incorporate this into the show notes, go for it. But otherwise, it's not that big of a deal. It's just like a stupid, fun video. But go, go ahead, Nadir. Right. So I remember I saw the video and I saw the song track and I, I heard you listening to you, you, you playing some Daft Punk. And then another video you had like um, this this DJ, his name is Milkman. I'm not sure if he's still active, but um, you had these individuals. I was like, yo, that's dope. Like Daft Punk. Like, yo, you listen to that? He, he listens to Daft Punk? I was like, damn, I listen to Daft Punk. And that was when, when Daft Punk brought out one of their most successful albums i think i think the name of the album was um random access memories that say it again one. random access memories when they brought up that album but that you guys had all had already been using some of the songs that was in that album i mean daft punk had previously published some songs previously that were in the album in 2013 so when i saw the songs like yo that's dope I don't remember when I when I began telling you, yo, yo, your videos, man, your videos are cool, and I just kind of like began interacting with you. And I guess for first time me me meeting you, I guess for you was kind of like, bro, like what the hell? <laughs> it's kind of like, bro, like chill. So um, <laughs> it was that, and then then you were staying at the house because you guys we had like a basketball house for our basketball players, mm -hmm. and you were. So I dropped by the house a few times and then I saw you, you you pretty much introduced me to your your friends and I saw like a lot of things that they were interested in in music the video games that you guys play I was like man that's kind of like the same things that I'm in interested in <laughs> it was kind of like, like very easily it, it was so easy for us to connect but also apart from that um you being a foreigner in Belize, I know how things could be for foreigners in Belize. You know, like I was, I, I had like, a, like an incentive to try to give you tips on the hints on you know how to, to maneuver around. You know, if anyone tried to you know, tried some, I don't know some. Try it with some Ross. <laughs> kind of stuff. I was like, bro, bro, I gotta let you know. Like, this is how this works. You know, like, no, no, don't go there. No, don't do that. Like. Be careful, like this is the this is the price of that. Don't let the, them overcharge you or whatever. Right. So I was and then I don't know, like everything was just dope apart from that. And oh oh I gotta say, since I do videos as well, it was like perfect. And it was perfect because when 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 I always I, I do videos, but I'm not really the type of person to be in front of the camera. At least not yet, right? Well, I kind of want to do, do that now, right? But in back then, I wasn't. But you guys, you and the guys in my room, like, you guys were, this is kind of like what you guys have been doing for a little while. So it was like, 
it was easy for me to just fit in with you guys because I have the camera, I'll be recording, and you guys, I'll just be capturing, you know, moments and epic times. So it was, that was pretty dope. We did have, yeah, so when my friends from the States would come, even actually our basketball team there in Belize and all the people that we would hang out with Belize and the deer would do this, but very vivid memories of when um, Josh Sell, Brandon Hauser, Johnny, who's going to be on the call later, my brother Paul, Ray Scheumann, um, they would come down. I think they all made multiple trips to Belize while I was there. And the deer was like our personal like reality TV <laughs> camera guy, like just following us around with the with the camera, documenting our memories. We've got like a three part series on YouTube of one of the vacations that we did there. Um, it, it, I mean, talk about adding value to the group. Like those mem memories have been crystallized and are priceless. And we can go back to those videos at any time and just die of laughter. Let me. Let me actually see if I can uh, link to, I'll link to part one. Uh, so it's a, like I said, it's a three part video series, but I'll, I'll link to part one here and I'll put that in the, in the Facebook chat as well. If anyone wants to see what we were doing, let's see, I posted it May, 2014. So I feel like it was probably around that time, but yeah. Yeah. And the deer's, the deer's just been amazing. Here we go. Let's see Belize trip. But I, I think with I think, the boys. I think with me connecting with you guys during those trips and you know like the activities that we were doing, you know, we're you know a lot younger back then, right? So we're just kind of like everything was kind of like a new experience for a lot of us, even for myself. Like, like we we went off, we we, we tried the party scene in in San Pedro, which is the most popular. Is island. Jaguars closed down now? Did I hear that? I think it is, but due to the current situation, but I'm pretty okay. sure they will because I'm sure when business starts, everything will be up and running. But um, I guess going to those, we 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 the experiences that we had were so unique, and it was um, very interesting to to see how you guys reacted to those experiences, like the part of scene and you know going out at night and. With the following day, just kind of have, being a little bit tired, blah, blah, and how I reacted to all of that. So it was kind of like, we connected so quickly and so uniquely, I guess, you know, because like, I, I honestly got to know who you guys were and you guys honestly got to know who I was. It was, um, it wasn't like I was trying to, trying to fit, fit in with you guys or you guys were trying to fit in to accommodate me. It was a simple example, like, I don't drink, right? And you right. guys, yeah. you guys had had some drinks a couple of nights. <laughs> and at no time did you guys were like, "Yo, no, dude, you got a drink." And at no time I was like, "Yo, I got a drink so I could fit with the boys." It was just kind of nah, man. Like, like it wasn't even a question. It was like it was from the get go. Like, yeah. I'm not sure. Like we knew for a fact, like, oh, I don't drink, so like, who cares, right? Like, bro, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> That's like, a guys, good point. That's a really good point. Know? That's how you know. Yeah, that's how you know we're boys because yeah, the guy so Nadir, he doesn't he doesn't drink alcohol and he has before and he's just decided it's not my thing. And never, I mean, maybe once in a blue moon we might make a joke with him or whatever, but we go out to the bars or whatever and just Nadir be right there with us, everyone having a good time. Like that is golden. <laughs> like this has been my experience with you guys, like without what with Josh, like with um, with Paul, with everyone, like forever you know like it's just like we are like man it doesn't drink like, it's cool bro or whatever you know bro that's wild. what's um I, I bet people would like to know though i think i you've shared it with me before but like what's your um kind of what's your take on on alcohol and what's the reason that you kind of choose not to go that direction mm -hmm. well honestly the way i look at alcohol and um, me personally i've tried it i don't like the effects i found a little bit bitter you know and I don't like how it makes me feel. And I think primarily because I'm, a, I'm an overthinker. I overthink a lot. And it doesn't matter what substance I do, for the most part. Well, I, I've only done like, you know, like weed and I've tried alcohol. I've tried <laughs> psychedelics as well. Yeah. But when it, when it comes to like alcohol and weed, bro, I know alcohol, like, it makes me overthink. And I don't, like, I don't have to get drunk. Like, I could just drink like like this of whisker whatever it is 
real, I begin overthinking, like, and then my hands start getting cold, and my feet start shaking, <laughs> like, I, be, I begin to twitch, right? and I'm not drunk. <laughs> See, I'm just, it's weird, because I feel, I feel like a difference in my body, right? And when it comes to weed, weed is kind of like a miss and catch for me. Because sometimes in the past I've done, you know, I've smoked. Oh man, it's one of the best experiences ever, right? Sometimes. Next time, so, so next time I'm gonna be, yo, like, yo, like I smoked a little bit. It was really dope. So the next time I go, yo, bro, like I gotta smoke today. So I would smoke a little bit. It's, it's not good. <laughs> you think like, bro, I would overthink so bad. But when it comes to alcohol, that's 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 a one thing for me. I overthink a lot. Next thing is, I don't really see there is much of um much health benefits for me personally. I don't I don't find alcohol having much health benefits. I know, for example, beer has like a lot of calories. You know, like, you know, it's just there's no nutritional value in beer for me. You know, and. Um, for most people, it's there's not much nutritional value. However, there's a there, you know, it's kind of like a social, you know, it's good for social interactions. It's it's good to it's a social grease, as some people call it. So it's <laughs> cool. People have fun with it, bro. And people, a lot of people, truly enjoy alcohol because it's fun. And then I can't say that's wrong or you know, like they're this or they're you know they're losers, whatever. Not like. Girl, and, I mean, like we just said, like whenever we would go to parties with you and like you wouldn't drink, like no, uh, no one even noticed. Everyone just, you know, you, you fit right in. <laughs> um, the next thing is like, I think I'm a little bit of an extremist when it comes to certain things. So I'm afraid if I would, if I would drink alcohol, like I would go all in and I would have some dire consequences, you know, like it, w- it would not be good for me. But um, like I said, you know, I don't really find much nutritional value on, of course, you know, alcohol. We all know due to the, you know, the abundant, you know, knowledge. It's pretty stuff. weird how out of out of everything that all the directions we could go with this conversation, that that's kind of like the one drug that's legal when it's like also known to be the most damaging. <laughs> yeah. Same, right. And bro, and I've seen it here in Belize, man, like. People have done a lot of stupidity under the influence of alcohol, like a lot of fights, hurting their spouses, you know, hurting their family members, driving drunk, killing themselves, killing innocent people. So um, that's kind of like one thing I don't, I don't really, I've, it has like a lot of bad connotations tied to it that it doesn't really inspire me. However, I am in no way or, you know, no way or shape. I, I can't tell people you don't do it or it's not good. I know it's not good for me. Like I should have that liberty, that freedom to, you know, to decide what to what 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 I, I could put in my body and everyone else should, you know. And then, so alcohol, not really my thing, you know, it's never really been my thing. Um should should we speak about <laughs> yeah, I think we should. Let's um let's see if we can tail this conversation about other I know what you're I know what you're thinking. <laughs> um but I do if Johnny is able to join us, I'd love to bring it up when he gets on because he sent me an interview recently um with a sh- a shaman. The guy's named Shaman Omar. And oh, uh he was interviewed. Are you familiar with a comedian named Andrew Schultz? Oh yeah, of course. I grew up. <laughs> I know who he, I, like, I've always kind of known who he was. And then Johnny sent me this interview. And meanwhile, I had no idea, you know, he's got this pretty solid podcast. And I feel like I'm starting to see, like, if you're a comedian and you don't have a podcast, it's kind of like, what are you doing? Um, speaking that, about, yeah. speaking about that comedian, a couple of years ago, either it was one year or two years ago, he was on the Joe Rogan podcast. Was he? Okay. And, and you sent me a link. He was like, yo, bro, like, he's dope. Like, he's good. Wait, of, I sent you that? You sent me that link. I had, I had already seen the video, right? Well, not the entire podcast. I had seen like a few snippets of it or a few minutes, probably half an hour, an hour. And you told me something to the effect of, bro, like, he's dope. He's kind of like a younger Joe Rogan or kind of like. Are you sure I, I did that? I said that to you? 
That's hilarious. I'm I'm pulling I'm pulling that one up right now. I'm gonna drop that in the Facebook comments as well. By the way, Courtney and, and, and Jeremy, I'm gonna be dropping so many um links in the Facebook chat now that I think about it. Probably the best thing to do for the editing and show notes purpose is just drive traffic to the Facebook group and in the in the actual video itself. So I'm um, just making sure we get it get that in there. Uh continue though, you were saying. Yeah, you telling bro, this is kinda like so dope. This is kinda like he's 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 a lot like Joe Rogan, you know, like he's he's kinda like freestyle. He's very open-minded, you know, he makes fun of things, makes fun of himself, he's humble, you know, he's not arrogant, you know, like, and that was interesting. So, um, yeah. So, that's how you shared the, the link with, with the Shaman, what was it, Shaman Omar? Oh, I haven't, I haven't shared that one. <clears throat> um, again, I want to, I want to wait till Johnny gets on. Let me just make a note of that, though, Shaman Omar is his name. I think that's his name on on uh yeah. instagram too you share on our group right on, on the group chat so i was like i was like oh i was like all right so, you know like i was like oh so oh did you watch that one no i haven't watched that one. Oh, okay okay but when i saw you share i was like oh all right i guess it's just kind of like another episode that you've watched or oh i see no johnny's actually the one who put it on my radar i had no idea that John was the one that shared it on the group he sent it to me and he's like because we we had a conversation that tied to their conversation. He's like, I want you to watch this. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll definitely watch it before we go live today. And then of course I was like, wait, where's Johnny? At? Show you. Come on now, boy. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he'll, he'll show up. Even if he doesn't, like we're going to have a great time and we'll, we'll bring him on another time. But um, yeah. So were you, were you saying something else? I know I want to tie back to this again, this later, but was there something else you were saying? I do, you know, a few years back, I remember you did share that that so okay <clears throat> yeah so um let's let's go ahead and do this because we were talking about what we're what we're working on right now and you're talking about uh, a motorcycle club that are you are you going to be the one starting it up or like a motorcycle club in belize sounds like what are you talking you know like obviously when people hear motorcycle club they're thinking like people on their choppers like harley davidson type of stuff like is is that what it is or is it am i are we missing the mark here it's not that um, here in Belize we already have motorcycle clubs where like in the street bikes and like the ninjas, the you know, the, the big engine bikes. Also they have for the choppers as well. But um those groups are pretty much very fragmented throughout the country, which are you know very small groups in different parts of the um, country. What I'm what I'm talking about is um, an adventure motorcycle club. So pretty much the name of it is Adventure Motor Belize. And it, for that, most of the motorcycles that we'll, we'll have, it will be like dirt bikes and dual sports, which are pretty much um, street legal dirt bikes. And then pretty much the reason, the reason is because we'll be going, our, our adventures will mostly be focused off-road, you know, like, so to some remote remote places in Belize, you know, because you want to experience, you know, like the beauty of Belize, you know, like Belize is quite a beautiful country, you know, nature wise, you know, and it's not, and it's not really developed. So there's a lot of nature, there's a lot of, you know, beautiful landscapes and, you know, Would it be like a cross country, like a uh, trip or something? Pretty much, right. So what I'm thinking is, We'll have meetups at different locations, and we'll 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 we'll, we'll travel to on, on on the weekends. We'll travel to different places, like deep in the jungle, to some mon to some monuments, for you example. You'll take will you take the bikes to like um your favorite place that you would go with with Josh. What's it called again? Pine Ridge. Pine Ridge. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Like I'll take it to Pine Ridge, but. We're going deeper than Pine Ridge, like deep in the mountains, where we could do some places that not a lot of Belizeans get to experience. And with these adventures, I want to be cap I'll be capturing photos and videos, and I want to also promote conservation of these wonderful places, because I would like for the future generations of Belizeans to appreciate these places as much as we do. So um, it'll be fun. I don't think actually there's nothing there's no such there's nothing like that in Belize yet dude you know what you need to do I'm looking at this right now I'm trying to find like a video clip for Mountain Pine Ridge to share in the group 
and it's all like white people that are visiting Belize. Like we need a Belizean like take on it. <laughs> it's all like tourist stuff, which is yeah, true. You, like you said, most Belizeans like never get to go up there for you know for whatever reason. Yeah. But, yeah. So yeah. I, I want more Belizeans to get to appreciate Belize. And of course, when 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 foreigners come around, you know, like I'm hoping we could have motorcycle that we could rent and tours that we could offer so we could pretty much you know take the tourists to appreciate these places as, as well so we could visit so we could enjoy these places because um, I don't know. and hopefully that would provide a source of income you know for, for the for the club and also for the people that take care of these amazing places you know like, so they, they could keep maintaining these places and of course, that will definitely promote conservation of these places. So um, it's kind of it's 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 a first of its kind in Belize, and um, I'm pretty confident this it'll be a big deal in Belize because it's non-existent. So um, and eventually down the line, depending on how big we get, I would like to have tours and have different trips beyond Belize, you know, like into Guatemala and Mexico, but specifically Guatemala, because Guatemala has a lot of beautiful places to offer as well. Nice. Well, what's it like um, if you wanted to start doing some tours, I guess, based out of Belize, but I guess right now the whole thing is, okay, is it, are you able to get in and out of the country? What's the curfew type of stuff? Like, Walk us through what that looks like moving forward. And if you're able, because actually, dude, you'd be like the perfect tour guide. You've already been doing it your whole life, especially with us, but you just haven't been getting paid for it yet. So the deer price tours, by the way, guys, you got to drop this in here if we hadn't said it yet, at least once. And you know what I'm going to say, Nadir. <laughs> the first ever prime minister of Belize, go look him up, George Cadle Price, I believe 1981. Was it 1981 or 83? Yeah, 81. That's I don't know which direction you are on Facebook. Let's see. <laughs> That's this guy's grand uncle. So we have royalty on the line here today. But anyways, yeah, Nadir Price um, adventures or something like it's got to happen. So tell us what that would look like in this like era that we're living in right now. I mean, in this era, pretty much right now, the borders are they're closed, right? So you can't go in and out of the country unless you have like a valid reason, which would be probably for health reasons, whether you need to go out of the country to get medical care or whatever it is, you know, like for that. Like I don't probably go to Mexico, right? And you can go in if it's for medical. Yeah, yeah, that's the only reason. You can only go in and out of the country if you're flying out. So the airport is open. So people could come in, people could leave, but when it comes to like the borders, you can't, not the, you know, not the road borders. So, um, Right now, with that being what it is, like our our main focus would be in Belize, like just travel all over the country, and the country has a lot to offer, man. So that's kind of like the main focus. And it's interesting that you said about um, my grand uncle, because a little bit of history. Right? <laughs> when he was when he was campaigning for independence for the country, he was traveling all over Belize, like. And he was he was traveling on all of, it was our Range Rover, you know, like him, his 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 driver, you know. And he bro, he would go this was this was during the sixties and seventies, right? Because the road to the road to independence independence was pretty long and a little bit, you know, tedious for him. It was it was pretty hard, you know, him and his team and everyone involved. So throughout those years, like a good portion of his life, he was traveling to all these places, like deep in the remote areas, you know, like far, like where you had to walk, you had to walk like days on end, you know, like you had to like ride horses or donkeys. And he would go to these places um, that are, that it was mostly, most of the people that lived there were in the, the Maya which are native, the, the, the native Americans, pretty much, they're, they're native Belizeans, right? And um, a, lot of, a lot of Hispanic people as well, like Mestizos, which are a mixture of the Maya and the Spanish. 
and they were in these living far off from civilization pretty much a lot of them were there because traditionally that's where they live all their lives and for the mestizo they were there because a lot of them fled central america like the, the civil wars that were happening in in the neighboring guatemala and el salvador and a lot of these people didn't really have access to education and my grand uncle went there and he explained to them like hey guys like this is what we want like i need your support so we could we could establish a nation so we could be independent we could sort of decide our destinies you know so we could have education so we could have better wages so we could have access to our resources so the man pretty much man went all over the place like and like he was the dopest person ever right if you come to Belize, you ask any Belizean about that man, how about you? About George Price, yep. No, oh, man, he was dude. That I mean, it, I, I gotta say, like, obviously, you're related because I have never met one person. Nadir is the type of person you could put him in the room with someone, any person in the entire world, give it an hour, and they'll be walking out like hugging each other. <laughs> like, it's just his nature. And so, like, George Price had that same essence. Yeah, it's just like this man, like. The, the, they used to they used to say well they, they still say this like they were like you know George Price he he walked among kings but he kept the common cups because like like literally he walked with kings and the queen and blah blah but you know with right yeah. presidents they were like his friends you know like right he was friends with uh, Jimmy Carter right yeah on George Bush senior yeah he met Reagan and you know I've seen some YouTube videos so he but he met these high you know elite high level people right and he came back to Belize and he was in the streets and you know like meeting you know like having social very human interactions with the everyone you know like commoners like and he was he was just that bro and like the authority that he had he didn't need to say anything he he didn't he, he he didn't command people like he was like no man it's a surprise like yo bro what are you doing like get the deal from the surprise oh my surprise I brought this for you like it was so it was it was it was, it was unique you know yeah and the uh the main highway in Belize I think well, it used to be called the Western Highway but it's called the George Price Highway now yeah yeah mm-hmm. best part about that highway is uh you can pretty much go as fast as you want. I guess there is technically a speed limit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, speed limit is, I believe it's 55 miles per hour, but um, people, you know, like who's stopping you from going 55 miles, more than 55 miles per hour. Yeah. I usually just go, you know, six to seven days. Some people, 100, whatever. <laughs> right. I remember, uh, I can't remember his name, but our buddy who owned like he had like a flower plantation in Belmopan and he had that dog named Diesel if you remember he had that we went and he had like some he had like some alligators too he had like gators um I don't know if you, I think his name started with the J but um he lived in Belize City but his plantation or whatever his farm where he grew these beautiful flowers um was it was you know it's hour away normally but he was like oh yeah I get I can get back and forth and like a half hour like 40 minutes because he's busy going like 120 down the western highway which is insane because it's not like there is there even maybe double yellow lines for a little bit <laughs> no like back then they had no double yellow lines oh did they, they paint had, lines now okay <laughs> the highway was very thin it is wide oh, it's a little more so, wide okay back then it's not safe but here's the interesting thing like what we're seeing right now, and your people drive as fast as they want. The amount of car accidents and the amount of people that have died there, it's it's a lot. Yeah. Kind of, and a lot has occurred because I would assume you're know, careless driving or, you know, drunk driving. Because driving fast does not mean that you're driving carelessly. You know, if you if you if you know what you're doing, if you know what your car is capable of, you know. You know how to handle your car you know your car you you'll be good you know there's no issue with that but then you know that's not the case for a lot of people so a lot of people have courage there you know sadly but you know 
that's that's the way it is <laughs> yeah uh so one thing that you and i were been connecting on a lot lately is uh the power of intermittent fasting and i've done it before for a you know, I'd say no more than a month. Um, every now and then I would do like a 24 hour water fast. But uh, anyways, I haven't gotten back into any type of fasting until about a week ago. Uh, shout out to Nikki, because she's the one that, well, I think we'll both probably both take credit for it. I feel like I was telling her that I wanted to do it, but I was not like taking action on it. And then recently she's like, all right, let's do it. I'm like, okay. So basically every day we're eating like within a four hour window. And it actually tends to be more in the evening, like say, for example, like from 7 or 8 p.m. until 11 or 12 midnight. And uh, it's amazing because one, I've actually felt like I have a lot more energy lately, which is weird because you would think like, especially the way you're taught in school and stuff, right? Like, oh, you got to eat to have energy and blah, blah, blah. Food is your fuel, which I mean, it still kind of is. But anyways, uh, so energy levels are up been able to work out no problem, whether I'm working out and eating right after it or working out in the morning, like obviously every now and then you get a little hungry, you want to reach for something, but it's not unbearable. And then the cool, the best thing is like our meals have become very focused. Like, okay, we're going to eat this today. All day you look forward to that one meal. All day you look forward to that one snack you're going to treat yourself with. And then it's just like, it's rinse and repeat. And I, I've shared that with you and you're like, oh yeah, I've been doing, I've been doing it for six months or something like that. And, uh, you sent me like a video, like you're like, clearly you're getting results. Cause I remember, I remember the old, uh, scrony Nady <laughs> and guys in the beer, you, you can't see it now, but be careful. My man's is Jack. He's Jack and he's been intermittent fasting. He's been working out with our buddy, Chrissy shout out to Chris Enriquez. I'll give him a tag here real quick. Um, but yeah, tell us a little bit about your journey of like, I guess your, your fitness journey. Cause you've always kind of been healthy, but you've yeah. really like changed it recently. So um, pretty much I've always been healthy, like you said, because most of my life, I've always been eating whole foods, not a lot of junk, you know, mostly whole foods. And, you know, just, I've always, I've always tried to take care of, I, I, I wouldn't say I want to take care of myself. It's just kind of like, this is kind of like, this could just kind of like me, man. Like, I'm not sure if, because that's how we grew, I grew up here in Belize. But I just, I just enjoy eating natural whole foods, you know, like whether it's fruits, whether it's, you know, veggies, whether at one point I was doing, I was vegan for a little while. That, w- that didn't work out too good because I wasn't really getting the, the necessary nutrients like vitamin B- B12. But um, for the most part, I'd say I've been doing in- intermittent fasting for quite a while. It's even years, however, not with a discipline. Like for years, I would skip the first meal because I don't know. I get, I was just lazy, I guess. So I would just skip the first meal, and then I would eat at midday or at noon. But I wouldn't really, really focus much on what I was eating. It wasn't like it wasn't really planned. It was like oh, just whatever. And then in the evenings, I would eat late at night. So for the most part. Like if I would walk around, a lot of people would look at me and they would be like, um, you know, Nadir, he's, he's, they would think I'm skinny. And yeah, I was skinny, but um, I had a, a decent amount of, you know, body fat as well. Not like a lot, but I didn't have like definition, you know. And um, it was like six, seven months ago, I was, I was living in the south, southern, southern part of Belize with, um, with a really good friend of mine. Who's, and my family as well you know and then he's an older individual you know I was I was down there with him and his family I went down there to help him with a little project he was working on and he he bro he he he, he explained to me a lot of things you know like about you know responsibility you know about self-respect about discipline he just explained to me he didn't ask me to, to do anything but the way he, he explained to me, and he's he's like 55, you know, like he's an older individual. And like he he was like very blunt, you know, like he let me know what he felt would be beneficial and I should know. So um he would just call me out on a couple of things. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, bro, like for real? I was like, okay, okay. So that's kind of like what led me began to that's kind of like what led me into my fitness journey because i was like 
also, let me say this. Also, I've always, I, I, I always view my body as like the most, I don't know, the most holy thing ever created, I guess. Like that's how I, I, I believe everyone, everyone should view their bodies. And this is a realization that I had a couple of years ago when I was, um, I was having, you know, like I, I was under, you know, I had a psychedelic experience. Mm-hmm. And I saw that my body is ultimately the most important thing ever, 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 you know, because it doesn't matter what my name is, whether I'm royalty or whether I come from, you know, from a affluent family or whether I'm a billionaire, like, bro, if I don't have this in check, like, there's, what's the purpose of everything, you know, like, I could have all the money in the world, but if I don't have the physical power, you know, like, my physical body healthy to travel and experience and enjoy my, my wealth, what's the purpose? So, with all this happening and COVID happening and, you know, the pandemic, and I was like, you know what? I've been fairly healthy for the, for most of my life. Like I don't ever get sick. So I was like, you know what? I'm pretty sure I could take things to another level. And that's when I began working out pretty much and just doing body works, you know, like push-ups, pull-ups, you know, simple stuff that I could do, you know, at home, anywhere. And then I began to really focus on my intermittent fasting because I was, I was always doing it. I was like, man, I've been doing this. I realized that, yo, I've been doing this for years. Like, let me be more disciplined with this. So um, I began eating, my first meal was between one and uh, one at noon and nine in the evening, you know, 9 p.m. I didn't really strictly, I just ate within that time period and I was working out. And you know, like my foods are pretty much clean food, you know, and like six weeks later, I saw it six months later, like I saw the, I, I saw the, the, um, the, the, the progression, like in the instant, <laughs> I was like, yo, this is insane. And um, it happened so quickly, like, like I got lean, like so quick, like it's you insane. Did. You were never, you were never, ever, ever, I would say like chunky or like, or fat or anything like that, but you definitely got, you got definition. You yeah, have right. definition now. Yeah. I, I never, like, I was, I was, I, I never had, like, in, like, muscle, like, I never showed, you know, like, I'm right. not sure if it's a part of, you know, like, my genetics or what, it was just never there. And even now that I'm pretty much lean, I'm, I, I guess I'm pretty much athletic now. Like, um, I still, like, I, it's not, like, I, I don't have, like, huge, you know, like, muscles or I'm, I'm not like huge or it's just like I'm pretty much are we going to be able to get you to flex for the camera I don't know what should I flex my hand yeah you might as well man <laughs> there we go like yeah Nadie's getting jacked guys and I don't know if we can get some of some of his ladies in the comments here and say take your shirt off and we'll we'll do it but that's you guys have to encourage him to do it I'm not going to make him do it <laughs> Bro, here's the interesting part now so you know I was like, you know what? I'll do this so I could, I, I want to look good, man. I want to look good. I want to be healthy. But I didn't know the mental effect this would have on me. Like the discipline of working out and intermittent fasting. Bro, when I'm fasting for the most, for the most part of the day, I have like a lot of energy, like a lot of energy, right? Like, and, and I'm super focused, like, I could read, like even I could talk, like honestly, I'm not sure if you remember, I wasn't really fluent. I would get nervous, I would get anxious. Like now, like I could I could literally focus on what I want to say. I, I want to let you know, you know, yo, this is what this is what I feel, this is what I feel, like this is what I'm thinking. Like I could literally do that. Like honestly, <laughs> I don't overthink as much before. So that has helped a lot with my overthinking. And would um, just focus, man, like, and confidence as well. You know, like, I'm more confident, but not, like, in the arrogant manner of, like, oh, like, yeah, I'm this, I'm that. No, it's just kind of, like, like, yeah, man, like, yeah, like, I want to do this. Like, I'm very, I, I, I would say, I don't know, it's just, like, it just feels natural then. So that's one thing, right? And this, here's the funny part, bro. This is the funny part. I remember when I began working out, my friends were like, 
Yana, Yana, bro. Keep it, bro, bro. Don't stop, bro, bro. The ladies, bro, like, they'll be paying attention. They look at me. Like, bro, come on. Like, like, ah, y'all, bro. Who cares, right? You know, I've always kind of been a little bit shy, right? And I real, I, I began going out for runs, and I would always run twice a week, you know, like four miles run, whatever, you know. And, bro, the psychology, the human psychology, I was shocked, bro. Like, people began paying attention to me. Like, bro, people look at me like, what the hell? Like, bro, <laughs> like, that has never really been my reality like that, you know? Not like that. And um, it's just interesting. Like, so interesting. But me being new to this and coming from a different reality to this reality, which has just been you know like I'm like I don't, it does, I don't I don't want to get to my head I'm just like oh like if anything now no, here's the here's the interesting thing I remember before before I was like you know what like I'll get I'll get you know I'll get ripped whatever I'll get fit I want to take some really dope photos so I could share on Instagram whatever but I also I was like I want I want to like show some of my workouts, how cool my workouts are, right? That was in the beginning, I was like, when I started doing these really difficult push-ups or pull-ups, I want to share it online so people could see how dope I am. I was thinking from a mm. more selfish, egotistical, I was seeking validation as I was thinking, right? But no, when I, when I know that I'm here, I'm like, bro, I know I look at my old self from a few months ago that Bro, what the heck? Bro, I was like, I don't need to do anybody like what I'm capable of. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't need to show, even though, no, here's the thing, bro. Like, before, like, I didn't feel no, I, I used to walk like shirtless, like all over the place. Right, right. And like, now. Now you because, can. <laughs> but no, the funny thing is now that, that I know people are looking at me, it makes me feel kind of comfortable, you know, like, Bro, like, so I'd rather not do it. <laughs> but um, but like I said, like even I, I don't like the showing off bar. Like, it's, I I don't want to do that because I've seen a lot of people doing mediocre stuff for the gram or you know for social media, like le legit mediocre stuff. And I don't want to be group with those kinds of people, you know, like because bro, like, yeah, yeah, bro. I know for a fact I'm not mediocre. <laughs> like, like, bro, I go hard. Like, no, like, I'm not just that. Like, in everything I'm doing, now, whether it's, you know, videos, you know, like, business, whatever, bro, I go hard. And I guess it's just that, it's just that discipline, bro, that working out, intermittent fasting, so on. And I don't, I don't need anybody to see how hard I go unless they want to see, you know, but. Yeah. I just, you know, like I believe in being, you know, just, just doing it, man. <laughs> so all that, man. Let me do a quick. Let me just do a quick mic check here, real quick. Check, check, because I, for some reason, I heard myself for like two seconds, um, but now, now it's gone. Okay, cool. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> um, yeah, got. So I wish. Do you have any like? Because I know you, 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 you've minimized the ego part of it, which is fantastic. But do you have any before and after, like pictures or anything like that? Um, not necessarily, not intentionally, but I do, I should have photos somewhere, you know, in my hard drive or probably videos. I definitely do have, and sometimes, bro, sometimes I would go back and I would look at photos of, um, photos or videos of like a few years back or, you know, a few months, a few years back. And I would, I would look at how I look and by just looking at how I look. I could reflect on how I used to think. And then I didn't, I don't know, it was different. It was different, you know, like it was, it was not as clear as I could think now, you know? And then I just wasn't, it was different, bro. And I could see, I wasn't really, I wasn't really confident with myself back then. Legit, I wasn't confident with myself, right? And then, but I did still have like a sense of, you know, of who, I, who I was or, you know, what I represent, you know, but I'm um, not to the level that I am now. I know like a lot of times 
I could relate to a lot of things that you've always told me, like, like you gotta let people know what you believe believe in, and you're like, and all of that stems from confidence. You, bro, you always tell me this, right? And I'm not like, no, like you gotta like, like you gotta let people know what you mean. Like, I don't know if you ever, I don't think, I don't know if you remember telling me that, but a lot of times you've told me this, like, and I was like, yeah, that makes sense, right? But I still didn't really connect too much with it. It was always like, of course that makes sense, yeah, whatever. But it was like, to me, it was like, but some, but what if, I don't know, like, I, I, I was, I, I think I was, I, I could have easily been convinced otherwise, you know, or, I, or social pressure would have easily, you know, like, got into me like I could be like oh you know what well I don't believe in this but if someone someone would come around yo you better believe in this <laughs> it's like, all right bro like all right man I still don't believe in it but um but yeah I'll I'll I'll, I'll consider it you know <laughs> kind of like that but now like I'm very firm with the things that I believe in not I'm not saying that I'm I'm arrogant or I strictly believe in one thing but I'm always open to ideas, I'm always open to questioning my beliefs, my ideas, you know, like, because I want, I want to, I want the growing to continue. You know, I, I, I want the best for myself. <laughs> Love it. And, uh, and that's one thing I've always observed from you, you know, and I kind of wish, I mean, for example, the time I was spending in the U.S., you know, I kind of wish I was more like um, inclined to a lot of the advices that you were, you always kind of like, you know, were looking out for me, you know, because I was like, I could I, I could have given more than what I did, you know, and some things I just didn't follow up, you know, so those are sometimes I do have those regrets, you know, because I know the answer, bro, like, I remember a couple of times you, you connected me with a couple of people, but I honestly, I just didn't follow up because I didn't feel confident enough, like I was, they were too high caliber for me. So I was like, I was like, man. And I always felt extremely bad because I felt like I disappointed you. And honestly speaking, I did, you know. <laughs> bro, come on. So um, even though it's not like a big deal, but I was like, bro, like you should have followed up, you know, like who knows what wonderful things would have come up from those connections. So, you know, sometimes I do think about that, you know. But then now, obviously now, you know, like things are a little bit different. And like I said, like, oh, bro. And I focus a lot on my sleep now. Like before I used to, I, I, I used you to. You did like, have some weird sleep patterns. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, bro, and sleep, when I began sleeping, completely changed my life. Like the focus part, everything, bro. Like. Like I, and also, like, I used to, like, suffer from depression to some degree. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit worse before my first psychedelic experience. Yeah, yeah. Psychedelic. We're going to get, we're get, we're working our way there towards that topic. Poppy, <laughs> where you at, man? Yeah. yeah. Psychedelic experience changed everything, but I was so kind of like. What about, what about that experience? Um, just briefly, I guess, like, how did that erase some of the depression that you were experiencing and i think to clarify too the depression you were experiencing was tied to losing your father yeah yeah right? yeah so i was quite depressed for losing my father and also i would say i was depressed because i would i didn't really i felt like i didn't really fit in much with society or with the social you know yeah, yes, with society, you know, like it's cool. Which is true. Like in, in the best way possible, I would say you do not <laughs> fit in with your culture and people that I've met from Belize. Um, right. You're very but unique, especially the way that you look at the world. Right. But just to clarify, a lot of times when, 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 when I tell people, yeah, I don't, I don't really fit in much with my culture, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean I have a specific culture. I fit in more like it. American culture or Western culture, like no man, like my culture, I as I would describe it, is a you know a collection of ideas and you know of experiences and knowledge to some degree right. from all 
over, you know, like from different cultures, you know. So like I, I look at everything, bro. So pretty much I you know, didn't you know. you research stuff on the dark web too, which is always very compelling. I know when you when you lead a conversation, you say, Oh yeah, I researched this on the dark web, everyone automatically goes, Oh wait, what's he gonna <laughs> say? The dark web, oh my gosh. <laughs> I used, I mean, not to go off topic, but a few years back, way back as a teenager, I used to I I, I was into you know, like the dark web and hacking and you know that type of stuff. You know, that's in the past. I don't do that anymore. You know, it's not a, it's not interesting for me anymore. You know, I grew out of that, you know. But um, but yeah, but pretty much I I, I felt like it, I, I didn't really fit in with the culture of with our times as well. And I wasn't confident enough to hold my ground, you know. I was doing it, but I was I was paying the price, you know, psychologically, you know. So after my first ex my, my psychedelic experience. I relived my entire life, right? I was, I had this experience for 16 hours. I did um, LSD and I pretty much, did, I was by myself, right? <laughs> so I confronted myself my entire life and I saw all my, my failures in life, like all, oh, all oh, my entire life, all my failures, my disappointments, you know, my bad experiences, you know, like I relived all the most beautiful times in my life, mm -hmm. all the most horrific times in my life, like losing my father, losing my cousin. It was, it was insane, right? And I saw the issues with my life, right? I saw the, 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 the lacking that I had, you know, like the things that I needed to work on to become a better person for myself and for everyone around me. And then I came to the point of, depression and psychological issues and as I, as, I, as I was there you know like I was there you know like meditating as I like to call it I remember walking around the room just kind of just just thinking with a notepad just writing and I saw for the, for the first time well actually I, I can't I, well throughout the entire experience I was seeing my life from a third person point of view. So for the first time, I saw my issues, my psychological issues, a little bit of anxiety and most of depression, right? And I saw that all the depression was because I was dwelling a lot on the past, which is the past, right? You know, horrible things. And I know it, it weighs on us psychologically, yes. But when 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 I got that understanding, like bro, that's the past. Like, of course, horrible things happen. Of course, like your people may no longer be here. However, look at the bright side. I was like, however, look at the bright side. You had some amazing experiences with these individuals, like in memorable times. I was like, bro, what if they were never a part of your life? Like, what if that was a reality? Like, no, bro, they were a part of your life. So like, I focus on all the amazing things instead of the, you know, the, the, the bad things that they're not here. Like, oh man, my father, he, he died, man. Like my cousin, he died during, during a while we were here. I was like, nah, man, they died, bro. Like, bro, such is life, but look at the epic times. And I was like, man, I was, bro, I was saying to myself, bro, I'm so grateful that I got the privilege to spend with them, like, bro. I won't change that for anything, right? And then I came to realization, wait a minute, psychological issues, bro. And I began to list all the psychological issues, you know, like the medicines and the bro, that makes no sense. Psychological issues are non-existent, like they don't exist. They only exist if you believe the narrative that society puts on you, that culture puts on you. Oh, like he's depressed. He's not depressed. He's having psychological, your brain chemistry may be a little bit different based on the experiences that you've had. And of course, losing losing some a significant person in your life will traumatize you. It will have like an effect on your brain, on your psychology. That doesn't mean that you're, of course, yes, in modern science, it's called mental, mental illnesses. Oh, yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean it's it's unnatural 
it's natural for you to have these experiences. For example, you have a breakout, right? You feel sad. Of course, that's natural. You don't need a medicine to make you happy because you're sad. Of course, emotions are involved. You know, like we are humans. We are, we, bro, we're so complex. We're so complex. We, we, we barely understand who we are, what we are. And now you have the, 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 the medical industry telling you this mm. is what you need. Medicating. No, man, that's, that's not right. And that's when I say, bro, I'm not depressed. I believe I'm depressed because I believe the narrative that I'm hearing. This is the reason that I feel I am how I am. And when I had that realization the following day, Bro, like that day, my life changed forever, like hands down. And um, I'd like to even say, man, it's kind of like the best day of my life. <laughs> of yeah. course, that was the best day of my life because I had this realization. And that, that's just like a micro fraction. That's just a little fraction of all the things that I learned that night, right? So um, that's pretty much my depression pretty much was gone. Right. right. Yeah, you've, I mean, you've changed so much since those experiences. I've seen it for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I can relate to just going, being, getting the opportunity to go through a process like that. You uncover so much. And um, I think the reason why uh, well, I mean, man, there's so many like different directions I can go with this. But one thing that comes to mind for me, what you're saying is I know people who have entered into similar um, situations that you could say like involve psychedelics. The reason why a negative experience will take place. This is this is again, this would be my opinion. I don't know if there's any like facts on it, but the reason a negative experience will take place is either tied to setting or like perception of it. Like, so if you go into an experience where it's like, oh yeah, like let's do it. Or you go into an experience like panicked and like fearful out of your mind and expecting like fear, yeah. well, you are, gonna, you are gonna face fear either way, but that, that can trigger it. And then the other thing is, um, is ego. Like it, anyone that I know that would maybe bad, bad mouth what you're talking about, likely, although not always, you can't say always, likely um, might have like some insecurities or, um, you know, insecurities, it's weird actually, insecurities are very much attached to ego. And if you're not ready to let, get basically get that ego shattered, you ain't ready. <laughs> so, um, and then there's a few other things you mentioned that is triggering stories for me. Like one that Nikki shared with me recently was, um, and she's been doing a fantastic job lately, like overcoming this but for a while. She's always um, not always, but for a while, she struggled with like getting on the phone and communicating with someone and basically being the one to initiate a phone call or a conversation, which again, it's not just her. I feel like, you know, we're in our upper twenties to third or lower thirties. Now, thankfully we still grew up in a time where the standard of communication was talking and it really has changed to like the standard communication really is text and like messaging right now. I hate to say it, but like, that's what it is. And so, so many people some are similar to her. She was like afraid once, once you're get under the age of like 25, so many people are afraid to initiate a conversation. Um, let me go on another sidetrack here real quick, because this is such a powerful concept, but this is why the art of communication has to be preached and preserved if you want to achieve wealth and success because there's four levels of value the first level is implementation which basically means like you you work with your hands you're you know from on a low end the, the thing is your manager at, or you're you're a burger flipper at mcdonald's or you're a mechanic working on like rolls royces you're going to make anywhere from like roughly 30 to no more than 90k a year that's like the implementation level and then there's the management level. And on a management level, you manage the people that implement. And by doing that, you're going to be, um, again, anywhere from like, say, uh, a manager at McDonald's making 50K all the way up to manager at, 
Google making, you know, quarter, quarter million, maybe on the high end. And then once you get to the next level, which is communication, the level after that is imagination. That communication level is where the hu- there's a huge split right down the middle. And like 1% of the population operates on the third and fourth level. The rest are all in that lower 99, which again, is nothing wrong with that. But the big, one of the biggest failures of the current educational system is no one's encouraging or teaching with, with effort, in my opinion, the, the value of communicating and using your imagination, using your creativity. Co- top level communicators, you can just use like A-list actors or like celebrities or people who have like perfected speaking. Yeah. Talk, you can use Joe Rogan as an example. I don't know how many million he's making on his podcast now. And hopefully, you know, we'll see that <laughs> manifest itself here. But like that's the top level because you're able to communicate a message. You're able to use your mouth, which is just such an invite. You can't replicate that. You can't Absolutely. replicate that. So, and then the other thing you can't replicate is we'll use Steve Jobs in, as an example, or someone I really look up to. His name is Tim Ferriss, who are huge on meditation. Um, the creative source, like being able to just tap into the ether, <laughs> tap into what's coming. Source. that imaginative that that you can't outsource that and so once you're once you've gotten your and i'm working towards this every day i'm sure you are too nadir but like once you can get to that third and fourth level and just purely operate in that level you're going to reach levels of success that most people don't and anyway so the reason why i say that is when i hear stories of people being afraid to initiate a conversation you're always going to be on that third and fourth level throughout your whole life if you're okay with that cool but like let's start we're, all, we're built. We're built to grow, right? That's how we're structured. So, um, anyways, very proud of Nikki because she's overcome this fear tremendously. But one thing that she went to a doctor at one point, and basically, thank God she's in the medical field and was able to kind of spot out this BS. But she's like, "Hey, I have issues. Like sometimes I have issues." Um, and I love you, Nikki, and thank you for allowing me to share this, even though I didn't get your permission. I'm sure you'd be fine with it. But she's like, "I have issues um, on the phone sometimes with people initiating conversations," and the doctor basically goes, "Oh, all you need is..." Um, some Xanax or whatever, you know, just to calm you down. Some, you know, take some opioids and you'll be fine. And it's like, what that is doing is suppressing the effects. The, the thing that, you know, what, what she really needs or anyone in that situation needs is someone to say, hey, guess what? You know what? You can do it. You can do this. You have what it takes to hold the conversation. You don't need X, Y, Z. And, you know, I'm under the impression that the, uh, medical field or whatever you want to call it that we're living in now it's their dream to have everyone on some type of prescription and i, I thank god that you know right now I've, ne- I've just i've never needed one i guess you could say maybe like when i got my wisdom teeth pulled out i had a prescription <laughs> but like um anyways yeah. yeah we we touched you started talking about something that made me think of that <laughs> and uh, i'm sure you've got some feedback too right right that's interesting because Essentially, that's what the medical industry industry is. Isn't that what you should do if you're a medical? Well, in in the current current paradigm that we're observing in this Western paradigm, you're like it's all about making that money, man. Like you got to do what you got to do, right? And you and the, their morals are very questionable, but they have the, the the backing of science to to do what they do. But then, interesting that you said about communication because. That's kind of like what um, Jordan Peterson, Dr. Jordan Peterson stresses about. He's like- I gotta, I Keep going, I gotta, I gotta show you this real quick. <laughs> I just got uh, his new book, <laughs> Beyond Order. I haven't read it yet, but you see the subtitle, I think. Um, come on, give me some focus here, camera. Have you read the first one? Yeah, the first one was incredible. And I, I saw him on the 12 Rules for Life tour in San Jose. Actually, and, uh, right. I'm reading that. I'm reading the first one. I I know I'm late to the game. You know, I just kind of, I'm reading the first one. I think I'm on chapter five. Like, that's like what he stresses about a lot. I've seen him countless times and his podcast. He's like, the current education system is ignoring the importance of reading and writing english right whether it's spanish or english because you know both language languages arriving from latin right but he's he's stressing the importance of writing and reading 
because that really enhances communication. And he says communication is so important because you need to let the world know who you are and what you could, what you can offer to the world, you know, to essentially make the world a better place. So that's that's powerful as well, you know. So I, yeah, I've always kind of like been a yeah, I've always kind of been a little bit of a reader type person, you know, but um, not much communication wise. I've never really had that confidence to read it until now. <laughs> now like I kinda like it because like I, I guess before I just wasn't confident enough. But I'll, but going back to the, the the psychedelic experiences, I think every single individual this is just what I think. I'm no psychologist, I'm not a scientist, right? But I I think based on our experiences in the world, because let's be honest the world is a tragic place life life can be hard life can be hard and we all experience things throughout our lives you know growing up you know school whatever it is right so i believe all of us do have some we all it's just natural to have insecurities you know and you know probably dark thoughts in our minds or whatever it is right because we're human right and i think whenever you have a psychedelic experience those things because you see your entire your your wholesome self that's that's what you see and those things depending on how much of darknesses you have dark thoughts you have or you know traumatic experiences you have the psychedelic experience may be quite horrific, scary, you know, you might encounter beings or you might, it might be a bad trip as they call it, right? However, if you, if you, if you allow yourself to just be the observant and, you know, like to learn from this, that can, just to experience it, whatever it is, right? I think you will definitely come out the other end, learning a lot from those experiences. And at the same time, all of that, just like you said earlier, insecurities are tied into ego. Because ego, it's natural that we all have egos. We need egos to exist in this world because egos are a part of our identities, you know? Sometimes our egos can be arrogant, though. And it's funny, some of the people who I know that are like the most cocky or arrogant are the ones that I know that would be like, oh, no, I would never touch that. That's bad. I would never touch that. <laughs> well, aren't, aren't, aren't you aren't you that powerful and arrogant? I mean, like, bro, come on. <laughs> yet, they, yet they wouldn't mind popping a bottle of champagne and flexing on everyone. <laughs> come on. You, you got to go all the way, you know? Like, that, that's, I, I, I like messing around with people like that. You're like, bro, you the real deal? Show me you the real deal, bro. <laughs> Here's the thing, man. Like, so indeed, so our egos a lot of times if we're 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 we're, we're the big don, right? Like, if you go into a psychedelic psychedelic experience, when you see yourself, you realize like, nah, bro, you're not the big don. Like, bro, that's just that's just a card you're playing. That's just that's just a custom you're wearing. And you believe it to be ultimately who you are. You you believe that's your true identity. And that hurts a lot of people. Oh man, no, bro. So if I'm not that, that's the only thing I ever was. So what am I then? So people feel feel like it's over, right? They're they're you know, they're they're dying in existential arms, you know, like what's the purpose of existing? Like they're they're dying. Oh, it, but psychedelic psychedelics the experience itself humbles you like no bro like no bro like you're not that bro that's what you believe that's what a lot of people believe they are and sometimes it's good to be that but you being aware of it makes things a lot more easier you know because sometimes you need to let the world know bro don't mess with me like this is who i am simple i'll give you a little example like two weeks ago, I took my niece to the park, right? I'm there playing with my niece in the park. She's sliding and whatnot. And this guy, he comes around, right? He comes around. Um, this guy, he's um, 
whose bare feet he, he a homeless person right okay. he comes yeah. but you know he's kind of like you know a little intimidating trying to be intimidating and stuff and he's he's just there looking at looking at me i don't know what he was expecting from me so just look at him yo yo bro you good bro like what's up man like you good you look at me i was like yeah 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 he was, i don't know what he was saying to my mom. i was like yo bro please bro like go away from here bro i'm here at my niece i don't want nobody around me and I, I was of course i raised my voice and just kind of like look him dead in the eye like bro like please bro like all good man like do your thing bro like, bro if you come around me bro like i don't like that bro so please get away bro <laughs> bro he just walked away and then another little instance another time i was taking my niece to the park and this guy another homeless guy but you know the, the homeless guys here in belize like they they tend to you know try to push things you know like try to try to see what they could get from you you know if, mm-hmm. if you think so he's just they're just kind of like staring at me just like kind of like staring you know like as i pass by and that bro i i saw him right and i'm just walking there and as i walk beside him i just look at him i was like i was like he was like yo yo you know just just let him <laughs> I see you like, yo, what's good, you know? I said, yeah, he just kind of like turned his face like, bro, but even that, not that I'm being arrogant, but I gotta let people know like, bro, like, don't mess with me, bro. Like, I'm not a, you won't turn me into a victim, bro. Like, don't do that, bro. And then, and I communicated with these individuals, honestly, you know? So there's no misinterpretation. There's no, well, I thought he was this, so I, I'll do this, you know, and I, I was very honest, you know, so, and I think that's the way how we should have these conversations, but then, um, I mean, these interactions, sorry, but like I said, ego, ego, that's not all, man, like, ego is not everything, and just like me, for example, I could talk about how, how cool, you know, my workouts are, and, you know, how I look, blah, blah, you know, but bro, come on, bro, <laughs> <laughs> Or there's a lot more than that, you know, like having a discussion with you, learning things from you, listening to you, like you helping me, you know, expand my mind. That's more important than a lot of things than letting you, than scaring people off. Then let me learn something from you. Let me see how we could network, how we could connect, how we could work on something. Or you know what? I'm working on this. Let me share with you. Tell me what you think, you know. That's better than me telling you, yeah, yo, what up, Adam? Yeah, Adam, like, I haven't seen you in a while, bro. But listen, bro, I have my motorcycle club, bro. Bro, we're making stocks, bro. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> we're making stocks. We have, like, a fleet of 20 motorcycles. They're all, you know, latest model, blah, blah. Kind of, like, expressing our a, a fake reality because bro, I've seen this in social media a lot. That's the reason I haven't really been in social media because we see people like you living these extravagant lives and amazing lives and bro, not all of it is what it seems. A good example, the Dan Burt Belzerian guy. And so like it's good to be honest, man. And you know and so and that that re- ego that's what a lot of ego does because people love the validation i believe right people love the validation like look at me i'm doing this hey get a lot of likes and yeah bro like i'm not seeing likes and validation is wrong it can be wrong when it when you get for the wrong purposes but when you get for the right purposes when you've done something virtuous something honorable something to help your community your life your family to make the world a better place Come on, you gotta give credit where credit is due. That's mm. guaranteed, you know. But um, Dude, you, know. <laughs> you know who uh, who who does such a fantastic job at that, and I I love it because I remember when I first introduced you to him. And honestly, when I think back to when I first got put, he got first got put on my radar. I thought he was just kind of corny too. Is uh, Russell Brunson. And um, I know I sent you some Russell Brunson stuff and you're like, oh, I don't know. He seems like kind of like a cheesy salesman. And I remember when I first found out who he was too, I was like, ah, he's like an obnoxious marketing guy. But, uh, you know, it's funny. That's, I mean, I, I, we didn't get to go into detail on it, but I remember when I, when you and I first met, um, 
I thought that you were just, you were like, oh, Adam, your videos are mad. Like, and you just kept telling me how much you love them. And after I'm like, all right, little did I know, I would pretty much regret feeling that way. And again, call you a best friend or family for life. And so um, I feel the same way about Russell and someone like him probably hears this story all the time. But anyways, um, you know, talk about someone who has found their calling, has gotten to a level like, because you reach, I, I, you reach a certain level of success from my observation where financially, like you're good, right. you're good. And then at that point, it seems like there's two people, two kinds of people. There's obviously, there's the one that taps out and says, okay, I'm good, I'm good for life. I'm just going to kick back, do my thing, forget the rest of the world. And I think that's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but then there's people, um, like Russell Brunson. And I guess guys, you can just go to like russellbrunson.com and check them out, getting ready to go. I mean, I, so many of his teachings are, have, have become a, a way that a part of my life. And um, like this guy has created through following his callings because he's very spiritual. And he talks about like, you know, receiving like a certain calling from God or whatever. Like everyone's on this hero's journey, the hero's journey, Joseph Campbell, you know, anyone here, if you've never heard of the hero's journey or, or who Joseph Campbell is, that's George Lucas's original mentor. And it's, oh man, the, uh, where do I begin? I have a video that I did on the hero, hero with a thousand faces. That's what it's called. So anyways, this hero's journey. And um, so there's people that, that hear this calling and they just continue to grow and grow and grow until a point where the same feeling of maybe earning money for them once upon a time, that same feeling becomes even stronger through identifying who you've been called to serve and serving more people and changing more lives. And I am blessed to say that through my, one of my best friends, mentors, business partners, just all around savage. I love that he wears the shirt that I sent him all the time that says savage Hunter Thompson. Hunter's brought me into Russell's circle. And where I'm going with this is his product, ClickFunnels, which is quite frankly, probably just one of many that are continuing to come out of what he's doing, has made so many people millionaires. Like it's, it's liberated so many people the way the, the software operates. It's funny because he's not even like a, he's not even a tech guy. He's not a programmer. His business partner is, but he's just, he's the, we're talking about communication and imagination <laughs> and being in tune with your spirit. Talk about someone that just sets the example in a way I've never seen. So um, his Russell Brunson's ripple effect is running into my life. And it's now through Raise Masters, which is the mastermind that, I'm, that Hunter and I are running, which is the number one mastermind for elite capital raisers. Uh, we would love to have you guys at our next webinar. You can go to raisemasters.com and there's a, it says apply for or some register for the next webinar. It's right there. Anyways, it's the first time, man, in my life that I am yeah, I've always felt like I can make an influence and change people's lives pretty much no matter like what industry I've been in or where I've been working. But this is the first time where I feel like I have a, a service or a product or an opportunity for people where it's like, do you want to create freedom for yourself in your life through raising capital for whatever project it is? Yes. If the answer is yes. Come join us. Here's the keys. Like literally handing the keys and all that the other individual say, so I just pretend like I'm doing a a sale here, right? Like all, all I need or all we need from you is for you to take these keys, put them in your engine and turn it on and hit the gas. And it's, dude, it's, um, I don't have enough words to explain it, but I've, I've, I know I've been called to liberate others on this journey and we're just getting started. So buckle up, raisemasters.com guys. <laughs> Uh, and you said something that made me think of that. And I think it's just a ripple effect. Like how we're one of like thousands of people that are using, that are in this, this circle of Brunson and he's in Tony Robbins circle. So like looking forward to shaking his hand one day, but uh, it's amazing when you, when you find your calling and you know, that you've been called to serve. So yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I want to hear what you think. <laughs> Like I said, like, um, that happens with the, I know, speaking about communication, I think when it comes to communication, that has kind of, like, I, I guess, for all I know, you that's, that's your gift, you know, like, communication for you, like, you, I know your dad, Paul, like, 
you guys have always been like great communicators from all we've the time. We've been blessed, my my dad for sure. Yeah. And I think like you know, you with your entrepreneurial ventures and where you're going with your life and over the past years, all that you've been doing, a lot has been due to your communication as well. And you know, like your what I would say you were in yes communication a lot of times just your 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 honest approach to a lot of things like your your direct approach because I've seen and you've even told me how you do things you know like you would just hit up people like yo like I love what you're doing I want I want to get to know more about you I want to meet you I want to talk to you I want you I want to be like you I want you to teach me how to do what you're doing because I want to learn and bro that's honest and when people see that like I don't know how, I don't know, like, okay, like, he seems very interested. Let, let me see what's up with this guy. Then they see this, and then they get to know who you are, what you represent. Then they put you, like, oh, you know, like, probably I could connect you with this guy, with my friend, you know, probably you, you like my friend because you guys have similar thinking, you know, similar ideas. They connect you with this other guy. And then you guys can, yeah, yeah, like, so you guys begin tagging, blah, blah, share, you know, life experiences, whatever, whatever. You, you want to do this, you, you're working on this project, you, you express your project. What, you, you're you working on that project? What am I, let me connect you, let me connect you with my other guy that's working on a similar project. He might be able to help or guide you. And I've seen from me observing your careers this far, like, a lot of it has just, Communication, back to communication. But bro, I've always observed that, you know. Thank you. Know, you. Something I definitely want to work more in myself and you know, expressing and communicate, communicating with people, because I'm not, I'm clearly not, you know, like the smartest person out there, or whatever. But I think I, I have a few things that I may be able to offer to some people. So. I, business-wise, whatever, you know, so I, I got to start being more affirmative with that, you know, <laughs> that's yeah. still, still what you've been doing. Thank you. For all I've known you, bro. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Nadine. Yeah, um, I think the communication piece gets, because of, uh, I don't know who came up with this, you know, this term that we hear all the time, introvert, um, and I'm sure, you know, by nature, some people are a little more outgoing, some are a little bit more reserved. I'm just of the impression that everyone does have it within them to become some type of top level communicator. It just comes down to an awakening and realizing like what you already have within yourself. Because I look at, I mean, I've just seen stories and I can honestly this is, I feel like it's a story I've never told, but I can really use my life as an example because I'll never forget when I was younger. Um, we're talking like, I don't know, somewhere between the ages of five and 12, um, Paul and Leah, my younger siblings, were always like singing and acting and getting in front of crowds. And um, I remember always wishing that I had some kind of like skill like that like I was more behind the scenes I, when I first fell in love with like video and all this stuff that you see now I was in middle school and I was still always behind the camera <clears throat> and then I don't know along the way something happened I don't know if I just was a late bloomer <laughs> or what but one day somebody kind of put me on camera or put a you know put a microphone in front of my face and, and everything changed from there but I guess what I want to say is, um, I've been yeah, I've been blessed with the gifts, but it, it wasn't always like this. And I think anyone who's a profound speaker, I'm sure if I even went back and looked at any speaking gigs that I did like a year ago, I'd be like, man, look how far I've come. And I know you would feel the same way looking at yourself. Like, you wouldn't think you'd be doing this five years ago, like at all. <laughs> so I just want to give everyone some hope that like, it just comes down to like telling yourself like, okay, I'm ready. And maybe, you know, if, if the calling's not right, waiting for that calling, but I would advise if you feel as though you are ready to somehow start taking, stepping into that third level of value communication, 
please <laughs> reach out to me. Um, you can, you know, I'm, I'm on, I'm pretty active on social media. You can shoot me a DM on Instagram to say, I'm ready to take my speaking to the next level or something, something like that. Um, I would love to help you. And I'm so proud of Aaron Eiler, who's, um, an apprentice of mine who just launched his podcast. I'm listening to his like first four episodes thinking to myself, was he always like this? Like, wow. I'm like, I'm impressed. I, I told him like, dude, you are you are killing it. Like, I, it just makes me so happy thinking like, did I teach, like, did I, do I get some of this credit? Like, I can't believe how good he's doing. So um, yeah, I'm just, I would love to help anyone tuned in that feels like they want to up their communication in any way that I can. And um, yeah, I, I had a, I had something there for you and it's drifting, drifting away from me at the moment, but yeah. What do you got for me, Nadie? <laughs> just like you said like even even when you mentioned like late boomers like i want to say like i'm really out there yet i mean i may be i may be able to probably talk to you you know a couple of people but my network wise i'm not really communicating the way i could yet right but even speaking about late boomers right i've seen people bro people on youtube like older individuals like people in their 60s and 70s like just finding their niche and just kind of like killing it. That's insane. Like I, I follow this guy. He's um, he's uh, I, I guess he's a vegan, but he's like all natural vegan. You know, he's kind of like a bodybuilder stuff. You know, bro, the things like he's he's blowing up on his niche. You know, and he's in his sixties and he's living off of YouTube, and that's pretty amazing. And he's just coming, communicating his ideas, you know, and his routines, whatever it is that he does. Um, that's pretty dope. That's big. So, and I think I think there is there is a little bit of a hack there for anyone who does feel like you maybe feel like no matter what, you never want to <clears throat> become like a public communicator. Right. Still, I mean, still perfecting communication is key, but remember that that fourth lev level of value, which is imagination. And there's actually a secret level. There's a fifth level, which is simply money and using your money to make more money. But you kind of need the, you know, the third and fourth level to do that. But um, the fourth level is, you know, creativity, imagination, someone who's even prolific. Like I look at uh, Poppy, who's supposed to be on here with us. And he has a brilliant mind when it comes to cryptocurrency. And he could probably never get on a microphone for the rest of his life. And through his mind and what he knows and how he leverages it, be just fine so <laughs> that's that's the other thing too if anyone out there don't again don't feel like you have to go this way there are some other options but again i just want to say hit, hit me up uh, if you feel the calling i i know like a lot of times like something that always made me um, insecure about my communicating with people or just being in video calls like this is um kind of like my pitch like my voice like kind of like soft spoken a lot of times you know just, some people say it's, it's kind of like soothing. Some people say it's just kind of like soft. And it's, that's that kind of, but no, it's just kind of like, yeah, man, like, this is what it is. I don't know why, man. This is what it is. So I'm just, I'm cool with it now, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't miss you. <laughs> yeah. And we've all, I think having stages of insecurity throughout our life is um, a part of being human. Yep. I'm, you know, I still have insecurities and I have, I'll probably, overcome those and then new ones will arise yep. like it just i find it very hard for anyone I, you know what i'm saying like it's a part of life no, but um we we i think i think a lot of times we always as the complex beings that we are we always need purpose and we'll always well it's be the hero and his journey you know we we'll always we will, we, will, we will always be fighting dragons and stuff, you know, either straight out dragon, you know, metaphorically speaking, you know, whatever that may be for you in your life, another dragon will arise. You got to overcome that, you know. When you understand that, you know, like, you could, you know, you just get it, you know, just like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Just next one up, on to the next one. <laughs> yep, yep. Um. So I had a few more things in here that we've covered so far that are just like 
you know, hope, hopefully we get some time, time to dig into all of them. But one is uh, one thing that came to me recently during just some meditation, like just time reflecting and hitting pause and, <laughs> and then just taking a step back is the value of time. And I think you hit on it. And it's something that I know, especially when we enter into seasons of life where we're experiencing loss, time becomes very relevant. But um, I'll never forget when I was like 15, someone who's pretty successful was sharing to me and a group of other, you know, 15 year olds, say, for example, um, I, I can't even remember how the question went, but basically everyone was talking about like, what do they value the most or what do you feel like you not have enough of? And the older person was like time. I remember that was the first time in my life I had ever heard someone give an answer like that. And uh, recently, just during a moment of reflection, I'm like, man, I mean, maybe, maybe this is what happens, right? I just turned 30. So maybe this is just how it goes. <laughs> but I, honestly, I feel blessed even at age 30 to, to realize this is like, man, every every single second counts every second counts and uh that's a reminder that we have to honestly like taking a bath or a shower like you have to remind yourself that each day because sometimes it can slip um it's inspiring like it makes me want when i think of that it's like all right cool i know like what i'm like this is this is what i'm investing in right now is this conversation with you because like we have i know we have good things to say um and then when i get caught up like scrolling through the internet or watching i am enjoying a show that i'm watching on netflix right now which is incredibly rare for me this is the first time probably in like years since i first discovered trailer park boys which i know is kind of a crappy show in some regards but it makes me laugh trailer park boys breaking bad and now i'm watching better call Saul. which what do you know it's made by the same guy that that did breaking bad i'm loving it but don't get me wrong like i think about it sometimes i'm like this is how i'm choosing to invest my time so it's like what am I getting out of this? And um, there, you're actually, when you do watch movies and shows, if you're looking at it the right way, you actually can learn a lot. Um, it's all comes down to mindset. Like you can look for things like, oh, that's the hero's journey, you know, things like that. So anyways, uh, just remember that Nadir, and I know you already know, uh, but you know, all of our viewers and listeners is like, think about as this clock is ticking, as each second passes by, where are you investing your focus? Because that's all, that's really all the only thing that you have a limited supply of as we make our way through here. So, yeah. <laughs> very important, very, very important. And from my personal experiences, like, like I said, like I could think about the past, like I would kind of like dwell on things that, you know, things that happened in the past. And I know, like, I'm like, I don't really dwell, I don't really care much about the past. Like, I also focus on this time right now, you know, and even like if I've, for example, if I've done some, some silly things in the past, if I've done some mischievous things to my friends or family, I would, if I, and I recognize that now, I want to work on that right now, you know, and the same thing with business. I failed in the past with a couple of projects, whatever it was, like, bro, the only thing we have is right now. And that's, that's the most important thing, you know, like right now. And at the same thing, at the same time, if you've had a lot of successes in the past, don't get too, you know, don't 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 sleep, sleep on opportunities because of your past successes. You know, like bro, keep on working, keep on grinding. I mean, don't I'm not I'm not saying like don't punish yourself, you know, right. but and if you, know. if you make if you make mistakes which you will and if you fail and you let people down i mean i've 1000 percent struggled with this um in the past is like don't let those scars hold you back from doing what you feel called to do as well because i think we enter into a lot of situations thinking that everyone can <clears throat> see these scars when Absolutely. in reality they can't like at all and in reality they don't even know they're there <laughs> So that's it, man. You just gotta keep on pushing, you know, just gotta keep on working on ourselves, you know, our careers, you know, everything. You know, sometimes things may be a little bit slow. Sometimes things may work as we expected, or even better than how we expected, you know. But you gotta keep on pushing, you know. And, you know, becoming better individuals and becoming better for ourselves and 
everyone around Jackson is uh, standing. That's, that's pretty dope. Yeah, that's, and so that's like, all that we have. <laughs> Nice. Uh, Papa Carswell says, my boys, whoop, whoop. <laughs> so we're going to crank it up a notch here. Um, yeah. And there you go. We were talking about how Nadir is family. When my dad hops in the chat here and he says, my boys, he's saying that because Nadir is basic, you know, is his son. <laughs> we, we literally, I think I've said this before on like all the long formats we've done, but in my house my, where I grew up in Ohio, shout out to Painesville um we have a room in the house that we refer to as nadir's room because for like four or five christmases in a row <laughs> he came up to ohio and hung out with us so and so through all the times that i've been up in the states with your family because here's the thing right you're my best friend right yeah your family, they don't really have much obligations anything to me you know um I'm not a little kid, but all the times I've been out to the States with your family, like, they've always taken care of me, like, they bro, your family has always gone up and way beyond, you know, like, bro, that's, that's, that's insane. And I, I'm, I'm great, I, great, I greatly appreciate that. I'm so appreciative of that. And all the love that your family have showed me. And... I don't, I don't, I don't require anything, but they've gone out of their ways all the time just to like, you know, like make sure I'm good, not good, but good, good. <laughs> and then I got for all the dinners and every girl, your mom, man, she'd make like wonderful, you know, meals. And I remember what you call it, the, um, what you call it, the, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the cheese and... The tortilla? No, no, casserole. Okay, Cas it's not the chicken enchilada you're talking about, are you? I'm sure she did that once. I mean, bro, she, she, she has made a lot of delicious meals. <laughs> and I remember when I was in the States and she had all these meals. And I remember like a few times you guys would go out to eat. Like, bro, for me, I was like, bro, like, bro, what are, what are, you, what are they doing, bro? Like, come on. <laughs> There's all this amazing food here, these apple pies. I was like, I don't know, man. I'll, I'll, I'll stick with this because I trust, you know. It's, of course, I just, I appreciate that more, you know. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I appreciate, you know. I appreciate if somebody puts food, you know, family food, that's just kind of my thing, you know. I'm not saying that you guys don't, you know, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, there's countless, there's countless times in my life where, uh, um, you know, mom, moms cook food for many reasons. One, it's probably fun. Two, they like to feed their family. Three, they like to eat it too. Um, and I think the most important one there is they like, they like to feed their family. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, there's, there's, again, there, there's countless times where we would be ducking and dodging and like going to, we, we, cause we want Taco Bell. I mean, I can't help it. Like we want to get some Taco Bell. We want to get some Burger King, especially, you know, those teenage years and just throw it down. So, um, you know, there's definitely times we got like a Chalupa and a Crunchwrap Supreme or whatever, and just make sure you throw the, throw the guard, throw the bag out before you get into the house. And then it's time to eat. And it's like, Oh, why aren't you guys eating that much? Ah, you know, I'm not that hungry, <laughs> but uh, no, yeah. You can bet your life that anytime, any family member comes back to uh, Painesville <clears throat> that my mom will have some type of meal <laughs> ready for that person. <laughs> so, and, and she's big on the apple pies too. You're right. Every, every uh, winter, if anyone wants some homemade apple pies and you're in Ohio, you, we've got the plug for you. <laughs> what are you going to say? Yeah. The apple pies, those are next level. <laughs> there are some of the apples that your mom should just keep all, all these apples in this basket. And usually I would have like the, some of the apples that were kind of like, the older apples that were kind of like shriveling up, they were kind of getting dry, I guess. Those, those were my favorite. They had like such like a, it wasn't a fermented taste. It was just, I don't know, like the, 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 the fructose was probably more concentrated. It was, it was such a unique taste. <laughs> I love those apples. Yeah, I, I don't remember if she, made them 
last year, but that's something I, I know my mom, she always loves doing the pies. It starts in the fall, kind of goes throughout the winter. So mama will, uh, we'll look into that this year. Maybe we can, if it's okay with you, we can rebrand it to next level pies. <laughs> there you go. Start advertising for it. Um, well, okay. So we still got, I mean, we still got a nice chunk of time here. Let me take a look. I, I don't think we're going to get um, Poppy with us. I'm sure he's going to go through it and be like, dang. <laughs> um, but since it looks like he's not going to join us, I do want to go back to what we were talking about earlier. But before that also, um, one thing that you mentioned was like sticking your flag in the ground and kind of just standing up for what you believe in. Yep. And this is something that um, I think this takes time too. It really takes time to refine your messaging and make it clear to the people that you associate with, like what you truly believe in for a lot of reasons. And I think the first reason stems from what we were talking about for, which was insecurity. Cause I know for me, a lot of what I've found to be true in key words there, like I've found it to be a lot of what we're going to start talking about here to be true through experience. And I can only share what I know through, through my life, but um, some, oftentimes it's like what I know would go not against, but could be considered contradictory based on what I used to think was true. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's what's, if there's ever been a point in my time where I'm afraid to stick my flag in the ground, it's, it's tied to kind of um, not aligning entirely with what I, what I thought was reality. So um, the first thing that comes to mind for me was uh, Frank Kern, who is someone I look up to tremendously. I'm going to put a link to his podcast in the comments. It's actually, I think it's just frankkernpodcast.com. Yeah. Frankie. Um, someone who preaches about radical transparency and just like so many cool things. And it's funny. Oh man, I love this so much about him on his show. Someone asked him a question. Um, and actually, have you seen on, on Dream Chasers how I'll do like the next level nugget? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically like it's like a, anywhere from like a one to five minute clip. And then there will be like this, which is like a full interview. So a lot of his show is like just nuggets from like webinars and things that he's done. He's done. And someone asked him a question like, you know, what would you do differently if you were 20 years old again or something like that? And he's, I think he's in his forties or early fifties. And <clears throat> one of the first things he says, is like, honestly, I would tell my younger self to party a lot more because <laughs> I really miss it. Like I really, really, really miss partying. And he's like, once you get to my age, you just don't bounce back like you used to. And um, there's one of the main reasons why I love how he said that is clearly like, first of all, one, he's a very successful, just businessman from top to bottom work with some amazing people. He was right there with Tony Robbins when Tony Robbins really started hitting, like he did the ads for him. As far as I know, when, when he went from like pretty good to like, whoa, where he's at now. And he's worked with many other amazing people, names that people would know from a marketing and ads perspective. But then also um, recently on his show, <clears throat> he's got a clip where he's just like, I have a confession to make. I am a Christian. And he goes on like talking about how his life has been changed. And he's like, he's like, you know, I'm not like that, like judgy kind, but like, here we go. This is, this is what I do. And he was talking about how like he had this epiphany when he's at an amazing, like five-star hotel in Paris with his kids and his wife. And he's sitting there in the lobby thinking like, wow. I didn't get here on my own. What's the reason for that? <laughs> and so he talks about it in his show a lot. He's like really into like Orthodox, like Christian. And like, he's like, he's, he's always plugging it. But at the same time, he's, he'll straight up be like, where's my whiskey? I wish I partied more when I was 20. I'm like, dude, this is my guy. <laughs> this is my guy right here. Cause he's just radically transparent. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, one thing that I learned from Hunter and he's always teaching this to, to our members too, is like, instead of listening to 50 to a hundred podcasts on how to raise your first million dollars, for example, like just identify the two people or one or two people that you just, you know, you click with that you love and just go deep, like go deep on everything that they're putting out because what that's, it's going to just do so many things for you, including prepare you for that first interaction that you have with them where you can you know you can relate and click with them and make an impression on them as soon as you get that chance. Whereas 
Um, if you're doing it the other way, that might not happen. And so it's funny, like I've gone through my podcast library and aside from Dream Chasers and maybe a few other shows that I have friends that do their shows, I only listen to Marketing Secrets, which is Russell Brunson's show and Frank Kern's show, <laughs> which is the Frank Kern vibe. And so anyways, um, I share that because another key takeaway from Frankie, from Frankie is uh, <clears throat> you want to become, it sounds funny, but you literally want to become repulsive to the people that you'll that will never buy from you because you'll go through your entire life and no matter what it is that you're selling or representing like you name it there's always no matter what there will always be a group of people that do not want to associate with you or do not want to buy from you so you can write them off now since that's going to happen you might as well just become repulsive <laughs> to them because what that's in turn going to do is bring the people that you are more like even closer to you and become you know raving fans best friends repeat investors recurring business etc and then you end up interacting and having a great life being successful being surrounded by the people that you want to be with so that came up because you said something earlier about sticking your flag in the ground and i actually have to um, go to the bathroom real quick so i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you to do a, a monologue as i go to the bathroom but if you i don't know could you could you just kind of like recap and like give me your thoughts on what i just said because you I definitely, I think you know you gotta you gotta start sticking your flag in the ground a little bit more. Because dude, we we believe in so many of the same things. And honestly, there's sometimes there's some things that you're about to say that I'm like, oh, should I say this right now? <laughs> but okay. give us give us your take on that sticking your flag in the ground. I mean, first of all, like like what 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 you just hear, what Adam just shared is very interesting because it makes it makes a lot of sense because being radically transparent. You're just radically honest instead of if, instead of trying to fit like a card so you could be agreeable with people. Because being agreeable most of the times doesn't really lead to honesty. For example, if if I know if, if I know Adam is into something, if I know Adam is into for Adam used to play Mario Kart growing up, right? And I knew I know Adam likes to play Mario Kart, but I I detest Mario Kart. I don't like Mario Kart. But since I want to be on Adam's good side, I was like, yo, bro, you want to play some Mario Kart? Like, I'll play some Mario Kart with you, like, blah, blah, you know, like, I'm just doing that to gain something from him, just to gain, just to have that interaction with him. It's, it's not honest. Like, I, I'm just doing that to be agreeable. So, um, and I've noticed recently as well, like, since I've kind of like been kind of like more sticking up for the things that I believe in, I am coming to realize that I'm not being as agreeable as I was before. And a lot of people, I'm, I'm being repulsive. You know, a lot of people are really clicking with some of the things that I have to say, especially if some things, especially knowing that a lot of these things go against the, the, the social grain. Like a lot of people, like, oh dear, you question society. Like, are you not like don't you dare question said of course our questions is it because this is what i believe in and this is what i have to say and especially to the in today's very very politically correct world like it's insane there's something you just can't say for example recently i i, I commented and on, 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 on a post on social media pretty much some sorry it was it was on instagram this person this individual this chick i don't know her she messaged me like in like a like like an image of a homosexual person or whatever so i was like yo like what is this like are are you cool like why send me this what interest do i have in this i was like I, I, I was like, just to be clear, I don't have any interactions with that camp, like with homosexuals. I have no interactions and I have no respect for homosexuals. When I said that, she lost her mind. I was like, of course. She was like, what? You don't respect homosexuals? I was like, of course, I don't respect homosexuals. You, what, have, what have any homosexual done to deserve my respect? 
Like, you gotta earn respect. You know, like, and I was like, but apart from being homosexual, that's just a gender. And I was like, you know what? I was like, you gotta, you, you gotta read exactly what I said. I, I, I don't respect homosexuals. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm indifferent to homosexuals. I'm not saying I dislike or disdain or disrespect homosexuals. Simple technical English. I have no respect. What virtues, what, what, did, what have they done to better? I don't know. I don't have any homosexual friends, so I can't relate to that. But like I said, I have no respect. There's nothing wrong with that. But in today's world, even this segment right now, even this that I just said, a lot of people look at that like, what? So you're against that camp? You're just, you're that. You, you must be the devil, blah, blah, blah. Bro, come on, like, I haven't said anything. I've just said one simple thing. I haven't accused anybody. I haven't judged nobody. Or maybe I have. Maybe I've said, like, they haven't done anything virtuous. Bro, that's just what it is. And so what? The world goes on. And apart from that, who am I that cert a group of people need to command respect from me? Who am I, bro? I'm nobody. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? Like, who cares? It's just one individual in a billion, in billions of people. You know, if they want respect, they could be somewhere else and go, go beg respect somewhere else. But bro, who cares, bro? Like, it's just, just the way it is, man. <laughs> I, I applaud you, man. Like, way to just uh, speak your mind. And, and again, you're not going to make everyone happy. So, <laughs> boom, like, there it is. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Like a lot of things that I have to say, and I've come to understand now that I'm not, I'm not really a likable person. Because, bro, over the past six months, I want to want to be more affirmative with my beliefs. I'm not a likable person. Not a lot of people, <laughs> and I'm cool with that because I think it's honest. I rather that. I rather people not like me instead of people liking me for someone who I'm not. Imagine I'm doing something just to please a certain audience or a certain group of people. Bro, I'm not being honest. Mm. I, I rather people don't like me. I, I rather pe people like me for who I am. And the people that don't like me because of my views or my beliefs, it's cool. I rather they, re they don't mess with me. That's, that's just perfect. That's, that's just the way it should be. I mean, human societies have been like this forever you know so um, another another interesting thing that i i think i read on um dog cases and um, dog cases blog that i did i'm happy that you brought him up because i have to say real quick there's a, a clip that he did at the liberland sixth anniversary which in short uh, liberland is the world's uh, just one of the newest countries in the world based out of central like eastern europe and um, I host a podcast. The mindset of the country is very much libertarian, but I would say it's in general, it's just like an open-minded country that really has the power to change the world. That original spirit of freedom that you know we believe founded and began the US, that same spirit has now gone into what's happening at Liberland and Doug Casey spoke. And I have a clip that is very, it's going to be very polarizing, I think, once I post it in the group. And I think this is the conversation that I needed to have right now to just know. Like, I think I'm going to do it after we're done and going live. So um, anyways, I, I love Doug and I've gotten to meet him before and interview him. It's fantastic. So uh, you were saying something about his blog, Interma internationalman.com, by the way, guys, check out Doug Casey. Continue, Nate, the dear. I don't, I don't remember what article it was, but um, I read it a few weeks back and he said, Humans are inherently racist, all humans, you know. And then I thought of it, you know, and I was, I was like, of course. Like, we have all been, you know, like we, we have always, and this is this has happened throughout history, then up to this day. We have always grouped and gathered with people that have similarities, you know, whether it's ethnical, well, throughout history, it has happened mostly with ethnicities, you know, and races and whatnot, you know. And then it just makes perfect sense because even even way back, back, who knows when, right? When we were, you know, when 
when we were first, you know, when we were the tribes, we, human tribes were were the only thing, you know, before society was even a thing. But people gathered together with, with others that looked alike. And it was very important to do that because you want to guide, you want to be in a group of people that have similar interests, similar beliefs, and sometimes even when it comes to race, like because race and ethnicity has a lot to do with culture, right? So it, like you you don't want to be outside because if you are outside or if you want to mingle with everybody, you there's a potential that you could be a victim because the world is a real world. It's, it's, it's a, it, can, it can be a harsh place. And then throughout history, I've, that's how human societies have always evolved, you know? That's the only reason getting together with people of similar interests and similar beliefs, amazing things have, have been able to happen. Societies have been able to spring up, you know, civilizations because of that. And um, the way I look at it now, I, and, I, and I even questioned myself, I was like, bro, Doug Case is saying humans are naturally racist. And what that means is that yes, because we, we look at race as a, as a, as a symbol, you know, of, and, and it's very important because we need to, we, we use that to ensure our survival because if I look different and I go around, well, no, 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 days it's kind of different, you know, but still back in the days, a couple of thousand years ago, who knows when, right? If I look different and I go to a group of people instantly, oh, yo, that's a threat. Like, yo, you got to do something like, I don't know, he, I don't know he has some, he's riding a horse. Yeah, I've never seen a horse before. That must be a threat. We got to get rid of him because they got to ensure their survival, you know? And that's the same thing that's happening right now because I know how I look. Simple example, I know how I look. I've been treated race. I've, people have been racist to me, you know? You know, I different people of different ethnicities, you know? Racist, about, even, uh, people have even been like, uh, I don't know what the word would it be, but like judgmental on you based on your age, based on what you look like. Cause they don't know, by the way, guys, I mean, Nadir's like, oh, like you're close to my age, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> so, but I've seen Nadir get judged for his age based on how he looks. And it's, I mean, it's, sometimes it's pissed, <laughs> pissed me off. Sometimes it's just like, all right. <laughs> You know, someone, someone, did someone, when we were in the States, someone thought that you were like my son or something, right? <laughs> Forgot no, about that, which is just like, man, it's crazy. But you've overcome and always do. And you've always been good at laughing it off, honestly. Like some people would like, definitely like that. It's kind of weird. And I've seen it. And I, and I, and for example, like I said, I've seen people being racist to me here in Belize, you know, because I look a certain way, blah, blah, you know. And I know for a fact. I wouldn't go to certain neighborhoods because Belize can be a little polarizing as well because people instantly look at me, oh, look, here he comes. That's a victim. Get him, you know? So I know, like, I know, and it's very important for me to know it, you know, rather than me being dishonest and say, no, nah, man, all people in the world are the same. We're all the same. Like, we, I, I could go anywhere and nobody will do me anything because we're all the same that's not honest and I would pay a significant price for thinking that and if I am sharing that message I am um, that that's not a good message because let's be honest we're not all the same whether it's privileges we have privileges we don't you know like maybe I may have privilege I may have an expensive camera some people want some people you know like they see it. if I go into the neighborhoods they Bro, who the hell do you think you are? Come on, give me that thing, you know? So <laughs> and these things, these are things that we need to understand so we could safely navigate society and all these tragedies of society because that's what it is, man. So um, I understand that. And I, I have nothing against it, you know. So people are racist. I'm not I'm not racist, you know. 
Well, I can't say I'm not racist. I mean, it's all about context. What do you mean by being racist? You know? Right, right. It's such a broad spectrum. <laughs> okay, and sometimes whatever you want to call racist might be important to ensure your safety and your survival. For example, think, yeah. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Like um buying 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 food from a certain group of people. I'm like, you know what? I won't go to that neighborhood. I won't buy food from those people because it might not be good. And people, what? The racist just because they're this, they might be saying that, right? The racist just because they're this and they're from that ethnicity or they're from that religion, you won't interact with them. It's not that. It's, you gotta wait, you know, like, what is the price or what is the potential price that I'll have to pay if I interact with those people? Or for example, Adam, think, think about it like this. If you, if let's say you have an enemy and I'm here as your friend, right? Your best friend, you know? And I go interact, interacting with your, with your enemy. Like, what am I thinking? Bro, where's my loyalty to you? What price will I pay for betraying that loyalty and that friendship that I've harnessed with you over the years? Like, and that's how humans work. That's who we are. So if you if if somebody's against your camp or somebody does not mess with you or you have beef with somebody, nowhere, not bro, I will never mess with them. It's gone. No, I'm like I am Adam is my boy. You're against this camp. I can't I can't have any, any dealings with you because like it's it's <laughs> have too much to lose you know and that's how human societies have been and that, that's how i've seen the polarization of american it's always been like that man and throughout the world that's all it's been you know so it's important to navigate the waters and see where you stand and who you are you know yeah yeah i think that's like something <clears throat> that so many can learn from is is at the end of the day in some way shape or form everyone is racist it's it's inherently human and there really is there really is no end to it and i think the way the propaganda machines are set up right now are pumping out this message that people think they can end it and i want to say that the people that actually believe that they can end it don't realize in pushing that message that they actually make themselves racist as well because what you're doing is you're still in your mind you're categorizing what you're 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 giving light to the you're giving power to the definition of what it is you're acknowledging that it's a thing and when the more you acknowledge that it's a thing though it's it's not going anywhere <laughs> i hope i like could could somehow communicate that because it's like all right you want to end racism if you want to end racism then how do you plan on doing that like telling hey you white people i'll be friends with you black people well then that's still a racist statement because you're saying oh you look like this you look like this be friends <laughs> like so i think we should just drop the word entirely if we want to move towards any type of like peace and unity but Absolutely. as you mentioned it's, it's inherently it's inherently human it's inherently human um i think ultimately man, we, we, we gotta be able to understand our differences and that's you know like as long as our differences don't infringe on the safety and the livelihood of others life should be good and then that's the way humans we are social creatures we always we, we tend to to gather in groups and do things in groups that's not a bad thing that's i think that's the, that's what has led to where we are right now as a society you know so I'm, there's nothing wrong with that. So we keep on living, you know. But judging, I think it's just humanly natural that we judge, you know, like we need to judge because like like we said, for our own survival, for example, you coming down to Belize, you meeting me, you don't know me, you don't know what my intentions are. Wherever you go, you could have it would it would be naive of you to have the most wonderful perceptions, judgments of me or anyone or wherever you go, of course, you, you hope for the best, you want the best, you gotta be positive. But also 
you got to know where you're standing. You got you to gotta, you gotta be observant. You got to watch some cues. You, you got to have your guard up at all times, wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you travel, because you never know what could possibly happen. You know, and this is the world. This is life. This is reality. We are humans. This is nature. We are nature. And that's how, that's just the way things are. <laughs> We are. We're a natural resource. And, and so the uh, <clears throat> the golden nugget here that I wanted to say for Johnny getting on the show. Um, unfortunately, Poppy Seed, he wasn't able to make it. We'll get you on here next time. But he sent me this interview that Andrew Schultz did with uh, Shaman Omar on his podcast. And um, it is about ayahuasca. And... <laughs> I know that's something that we've had conversations about before. And I think if that rings a bell for anyone, you definitely want to check out this interview because it just uncovers a lot of truths that I think um, probably aren't out there in regards to the topic. And I, uh, I mean, <laughs> I don't know where I want to go with this, stick the flag in the ground, right? But like, I, I am a success story of this medicine. And uh, I just think that it's something that uh, should, needs to be shared. So putting it in the, in the comments here, you guys can go ahead and check that out. Johnny is very, uh, he, he's very inquisitive. And I was just like, man, this is, this is good. So um, not, yeah, I'm not sure how comfortable I feel going deep on it because it because we're talking about, I mean, it's probably just an insecurity of mine, honestly, because, but, you know, I don't want to be judged and this and that, but uh, life changing. And if anything, my biggest takeaway is like experiences like that. Um, it's like going to a conference. It's like you go to something that just changes your entire perspective or worldview. <clears throat> and uh, for me, it was like, it was one of the most validating moments I had in just in like figure, like just knowing who I am, knowing my true self. Um, I've been put here on this planet to sing, to dance, to be goofy, to, to make friends, to just, I mean, any, anyone who knows me, you know, I'm a little bit weird. Right. So like, I, that's, that was a complete validation there. Um, as far as, you know, the calling of, liberating i mean we i think we all have that within us too we all want to make our lives and the lives around us better um but i think from a, a liberation perspective of awareness and knowing what's out there and um having a better understanding for what the world is man that was a grand slam experience and my life has not been the same since and uh yeah, and there's many ways, I think there's many ways to reach realizations like this, as we mentioned, simply through prayer and meditation, I think you can, you can achieve this and you can find out who your true self is. But um, anyways, I'm just going to put a link in the comments if you guys want to check out this interview between uh, Andrew, Schul Andrew Schultz and Shaman Omar, a lot of uh, cool things are discussed. And, and, you know, as I mentioned, we got this a post I'm going to be putting up here by Doug Casey in a little bit where I had him on the Lieberland sixth anniversary. Like, I'd say anything, anyone that I listen to, anyone that I associate with and where I get my information, it's never a full-blown echo chamber. Um, and this would be one. Like, I, there's going to be things probably if you do watch this interview or anything else that I've posted where I can't say, oh, yeah, I believe in 100% of this. But, you know, 90 to 95, maybe 85% is good stuff. It'll just change the way you look at things. So there you go. Um, <clears throat> oh, there's, I see a vehicle in my yard right now. <laughs> but uh, anyways, Nadir, what, um, let's start winding it down. Well, before I do that, I, I, again, I, I love hearing your thoughts and your feedback. Um, what's your take right now on, on maybe like some of the things I just shared within the past five minutes? Oh, well. Pretty much that experience that you have, you had, I mean, I'm very proud of you for having that experience, you know, like we discuss that quite a lot, you know, for a couple of years, I would say, I don't know, probably a year, for a good yeah. time, and even then after you had that experience, and it's interesting how we are still living in the age of, I mean, we're living in the age of tech, high technology, you know, 
science and you know we we should be we are in the age of information and information is readily available for everyone and when it comes to like these substances such as ayahuasca psilocybin mushrooms or lsd like there's still a narrative the, the, the institutional narrative to institutional institutional and social narrative to look at these substances as malignant like drugs like it'll make you go crazy you're a bad person if you do these drugs like you're not these are so just substances that human beings now have been using for millennia who knows how long it's it's nothing new and um i notice society is very interesting though because society essentially is it is a simulation it is kind of like a simulation in the sense that everybody you're expected to act and do certain things throughout you know in society everybody is doing the same thing and that is not a bad thing because you're expected to to act morally to your neighbors your families your communities you're expected to be a good person right to to further progress you know the 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 the, the human evolution of societies and humans that's a good thing forever when when you look at substances and when 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 you try to control certain substances for their effect or what you deem is their effect that's not good and i've seen that happening a lot right now i mean throughout history well i can't say throughout history over the past probably 70 years like these substances have been controlled a lot of people have like a like a negative perception of these substances, which I don't know why we have all the information in front of us and everything's all about personal experiences. And I think the experiences that you ha you've had have been very incredible experiences, you know, and life-changing experiences guaranteed. I mean, mine was life-changing my takeaway was you know to become a better person and i've been able to appreciate my life more the world more like my friends more my family more um but i think society society can blind us from all these things because we we we, we can easily get caught up man like we grew up in society, we, 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 we do school for a couple of years, then we get careers, you know, we got to feed our families, whatever it is, but we could easily get caught up in that. And that's understandable. And when you take these substances, you, 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 you are more, you're able to choose to see things that you weren't really seeing. You're able to notice things that you just weren't noticing. And then, you have more appreciation for life and that's kind of like you get more of a purpose or calling that's where it come, comes out so i think those substances i encourage I, I, I no here's the thing i don't encourage anyone to do them but i do encourage people to do their research do your research and if you want to do it you can do it it's it's your life man like you should have the freedom to do anything you want not because i said it even though you could learn a lot from me or adam but um ultimately you you are the one steering your ship so you, you could do your research and you could you, you get to, you could easily learn from other people's um experiences as well and as people reflect you know like i said and the reason i Actually, I, I, I say I don't, want, I don't encourage people because, I don't know, I, you know. Well, I, don't, I, know I think you're, you're hitting on something. I love this take. Um, I got it. There's a, a member um, in Raise Masters who, I heard him share this on a podcast once. And basically he was like, um, as you make your way through life, you want to gravitate towards, um, oh, actually, you know what? I learned this from my grandma. So it's a combination of grandma and, a, some, and a, a, another close friend of mine. So my grandma said, no matter what you do, always give recommendations. That way, no one can ever come back and say, 
oh, you like, you told me to do this. You can never give bad advice if you're always giving recommendations. And then um, on, the, on the flip side of things, if you want, if you ever want feedback or criticism to make whatever it is that you're working on better, don't ask for feedback, don't ask for criticism and don't ask for opinions. Always ask someone for their advice. Because when you ask someone for their advice, it's a little bit of a subconscious thing, but it, it makes that individual feel like they're a part of the journey that you are on when you ask for advice. So always ask for advice. And then <laughs> on the flip side, remember, never actually give advice, give recommendations. <laughs> Absolutely. So is that what you meant? You're giving a recommendation on this, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. That's really cool. I never really thought of it that way, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I guess, you know, this has been a pretty uh, potent episode. So let's go ahead and get a disclaimer in here somewhere. We'll do it now. Guys, for the record, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a tax strategist. I'm not a scientist. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, not any of these things. And, and I know neither is Nadir. So anything you hear on this podcast is all it to, up to you. It's in your hands. It's your responsibility. We are just sharing what we know. <laughs> or just more personal experience. There's a hundred percent mortality rate on everything we just said. <laughs> I love that one. Cool. Um, well, let's go ahead and, and wind it down. This was, this was good. We're going to see where this one goes. Uh, a lot of a lot of information shared that I think maybe in our past episodes, some of them we actually have touched on it, but it just feels like it's on a grander scale now. So, That's how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You now here's the interesting part. Like a few times, I haven't been able to make the meetings. I <laughs> and John is, has been able to make it right. And this time, I've been able to make it. And John wasn't able to make it. So it's just interesting to see. That is funny. You're right. There's been a couple, there's been at least once, maybe twice, where uh Johnny and I wanted to go live and Nadir wasn't able to make it. And now it's now it's going the other way. Shout out to Poppy Seed. You Johnny. guys can't you everyone you can catch Johnny um on the last Wednesday of every month. I want to say at 11 30 a.m. Central. <clears throat> I'm going to be with him on this first one. I don't know if I'm going to continue to, to show up live with him, but long story short, he will be doing a, uh, a cryptocurrency review and forecast on a monthly basis for all of our lovely members. And actually, before I forget, uh, if you are not already in our Facebook group, uh, which is facebook.com slash groups slash IX Carswell, um, I'm sure you can find it somewhere in the show notes or just look it up, but um, if you're not in this group yet, we're on our way to 1,000 members. I think we're somewhere between 250 and 300 right now. But as soon as we hit 1,000, we're flipping the switch from private to secret. So you will not be able to find this group once we hit 1,000. We're going underground. <laughs> um, and that's, I was going to say for many reasons, but really the main reason is just one, to be different, and two, um, to really add value and make our, we want, we want you, our community to feel like you're really getting um, an experience that's not easy to come across. So uh, that's, what's going to happen. Once we hit a thousand members, we're going underground. So make sure you subscribe now and get in the Facebook group. And uh, also the perk of being in there is you get to listen to the dream chasers interviews live as they happen instead of on the replay, which um, I would think that if you're listening to the replay right now, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we want we want you here live on the next one. So join the Facebook group. Um, that's all I got in the deer. What is your what's the best thing that you've eaten in the past thirty days? We we'll close it out on that one. Hmm. It's kind of hard to say the best thing. Or yes, yes, the best thing, bro. The best thing yesterday. I had a kiwi. The fruit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hell? Like, bro. Kiwis are good. You're right. You're um, right. Yeah, so it was so delicious. Like, so it was so sweet. Not like sugar sweet, just like delicious sweet. I was like, man, like, 
and I haven't I've, I haven't had kiwis in in quite a while, and I was like, man, kiwis are next level. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Cool. Well, um, in that case, I am going to make a note to eat some kiwi soon because you're right. I feel like I haven't had it in a while, and it's a great one. And make sure so. they're right too. Like the yep. texture, <laughs> like the color, like it has like a fluorescent green kind of looking color. Like I can't say fluorescent green, but just 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 a beautiful green. Like I remember, uh, I wrote this down here too, and I, I guess I want to share it before we hop off. But we were talking about kind of just like receiving criticism earlier, and cr not criticism like the constructive kind, but somebody who you might call like a hater or whatever. And one um, fantastic bit that I heard from, again, from Russell Brunson was uh, your, your approach to haters should, the first step should always be, how can I be as cute as possible right now? So think, you know, think uh, maybe if someone says, <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know, I can't think of an example right now, but, you know, smiley faces and thank you for your input and just, just be as cute as possible anytime you encounter hate, especially on the internet, which is uh, probably a little bit more of a prevalent space to receive it too. So there you go. That's true, you know, like why attach yourself emotional to people that you don't even know or, you know, you don't care about, you know, why, why should they care? <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. So, all right, here we go. I'm gonna put a link in here. Uh, oh, that is a very long hyperlink, hold on. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to put a link to Nadir's Instagram, guys, go. <clears throat> go follow Nadir on the gram man it's crazy how like so the link is, was on Facebook and I copied it and like Facebook's trying to track the fact that I like copied the link from <laughs> for whatever reason there you go go follow the Nadir on Instagram um join our Facebook group for all the latest updates and cool things that we're working on here at Dream Chasers and with the IX brand we got plenty coming your way um and Nadir Thank you for investing your most valuable resource with us, your time. What's your, uh, what, what, I guess, what are your closing remarks or any parting words of wisdom? I mean, my closing remarks are, man, <laughs> thank you very much for having me. And it's been a blast. Like, the things we've discussed, I've had a lot of fun. I've learned a lot from you, as always. And then, I don't know, man, it's just, it's just, keep taking things to the next level i guess <laughs> yeah love it love it we will we shall and, and thank you again and everyone who's joined us here live we very very greatly appreciate your ears and your eyeballs and if you're with us listening traditionally whether it's on youtube facebook or the uh any of the podcast platforms be sure to uh you know throw throw a little thumbs up in there subscribe like leave a comment drop a review etc we really appreciate it it really helps as we keep saying, take things to the next level here. So this has been Dream Chasers, episode 157. We went long format today, which uh, I don't know. We normally don't do. Maybe we'll start doing it more. We'll see how this goes. But thank you for joining us. My name is Adam Carswell. His name is Nadir Price, the greatest. <laughs> and uh, guys, remember, in all you think, say, and do, take it to the next level.